Hey, <clears throat> we'll wait for other folks to show up. Um, hey, uh, Kai, Peter, and Ashwat. Yeah, you got to switch your cameras on, okay? Um, and Peter, uh, you too. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, more people are going to join. So, we, and as usual, we don't have to start, okay? We don't have to start until 8.15 or so. Uh, meanwhile, you guys should probably also, uh, you know, line up your questions if you have any questions to do a data representation, you, you know. Um, uh, one thing I'd really like is if one of you can uh, pick up the screen. One of you who has a uh, shareable tablet um, or even an iPad, you know, I, I, think, I think in Canvas, if you go to iPad, uh, if, you, if you go to your uh, Canvas on your iPad, um, um, you should have the option to share uh, not your screen, but your whiteboard, right? Uh, I know it's available for instructors, but if it's available for students and then you have an iPad and you can share your um, whiteboard, that would be really cool because then one of you, if you have an iPad with a pencil, I, I can do it too. But uh, I think, uh, um, I, think I, I found that my handwriting on, on the uh, tablet is not, um, it's, it's not that, um, it's a bit messier, right? Some, some of the students can write better, I think. I mean, if nobody volunteers, obviously I will do it. But it would be cool if you can do it because uh, you also get an opportunity. It's just like live coding. So <clears throat> this, this is being recorded, by the way. Yeah, just have to keep making sure. Yeah, okay, it is being recorded. Good. All right. Well, anyway, I changed the settings. Uh, I changed settings so you guys could join before I did. Uh, so, <clears throat> so I joined like, uh, you know, a minute late today and I'm happy to see all of you in class already. Great, great. So um, <clears throat> do you have any questions um, in the middle? And by the way, yeah, chat, uh, don't, um, uh, oh, Peter, you don't have a working camera. All right, but you do have a microphone, right, Peter? Peter, do you have a microphone? Yeah. 
Yeah, I do have a working microphone. Yeah, all right. So you can speak up, okay? Uh, and nobody, uh, please, uh, uh, for everyone, okay, not just Peter, uh, please try not to use the chat because what I do is um, I just use the entire screen to look at your pretty faces, okay? Uh, so I don't want to waste any real estate. Um, and even when it comes to coding, I, I think it's better to <clears throat> maximize the coding window and minimize all other, uh, you know, junk when we're sharing our screens. Uh, except, <clears throat> well, for me anyway, except um, I, I have a panel, you know, still showing your uh, uh, faces when someone is coding so that I can actually look at you guys <clears throat> and see if, um, all right, okay, uh, is everybody following along with what, let's say, I don't know, Brian or someone coding. And uh, so I, I, I can get a feel for that kind of thing. Here, you can also ask me questions about, uh, you know, uh, the syllabus quiz and things like that, if you want. Actually, Brian, uh, was it Brian? Uh, Brian uh, posted a note uh, on Canvas just a, a few minutes ago. Yes. Uh, was it Brian? Uh, not Brian. Uh, about the syllabus quiz. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't Brian. It was a person sitting in, you know, the top left corner, uh, corner last quarter, uh, last class. Um, I don't know. Hang on. Um, uh, who was that? Not Noah, was it? Um, no, I thought it was Brian. Brian, you were sitting up there. Uh, Brian, no? I don't believe I've asked the question. Not right, about the silver. Let me see, let me see, let me see. It's an interesting, interesting question because I, want, I do want to answer that. Okay, let me, let me pull up that question. Um, all right. And it's a good question, okay? Uh, so, I, and I'm glad you asked it. And it gives us something to talk about while we're waiting for the other guys. All right. Give me one sec. Um, <clears throat> did I see it? Where did I see it? Um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Canvas. Okay. Um, syllabus quiz. Or maybe it wasn't Reddit. Okay. Well, I think I got it. I, I can't look at the question, but I'll just. Um, <clears throat> but my, my uh, memory of it is that it was Brian, but maybe I was wrong. Um, but uh, he asked, so in one of the, well, some of you, not all of you get that question, okay? Because the syllabus quiz is all shuffle. And I think um, in one of the questions, it says uh, the maximum grade you can get in this class without active participation, okay, is, is and it says in the syllabus it's B plus, okay? So it's a, it's a no brainer answer, um, but there is one other answer. <clears throat> and that answer is, I don't care. Uh, and, uh, and, and two answers for that question. Uh, and so if you just said B plus, which is actually what it says in the syllabus, that's good. But it actually says, I don't care is also a valid answer. Okay, because people can do the quest and do the class, but not really be care, you know, not worry so much about the grade and say, uh, and so I say that is in fact the better way uh, to do this class than if you were doing it for a grade. So they're both correct answers. So you could be doing this class, you could, uh, you know, um, but you know, you just really want to do the quest and watch other people and have fun, right? It sure beats a, you know, some uh, serial that you might watch on YouTube or Netflix. But uh, so that could be a valid reason. So it's not just, you know, for you, uh, it's the, the, what is the correct answer, not the correct answer for you. So that's why there could be multiple correct answers. That, does that make sense? I don't know, Brian, I thought it was you uh, that asked the question, but uh, maybe it was Noah. Um, all right. Great, anyway, uh, hey Noah, no, 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 not Noah. No, no, you are definitely not in the top left. Um, actually, you were in the bottom right, if I remember. Uh, on my screen, I don't know if it even uh, records that way on, uh, on um, in, in the, you know, when Zoom, um, when you say, when you check the box that says record this meeting, <clears throat> uh, I don't know really, if it records what I see or you see and they're different, or maybe it just, you know, stitches together something else, <laughs> right? With all the panels, uh, because uh, ultimately for many people, they don't, um, they don't, uh, in fact, if you think about it in a meeting, um, the verbal and all these other uh, acoustic information that's exchanged is, uh, is only part of the information. Because you know, you can also, why waste bandwidth? You could also send meta information, right? So I could say, well, the ordering of participants is also an, a, a part of the information, right? And, and then as we're talking, and it, it's not just part of information that's conveyed, it's also information that's 
it makes it easier for communication to happen, right? Because, you know, you don't want people to be jumping <laughs> all around. Um, so I don't know. Um, because I saw that happen last class, and I thought that's not a good way to do a UI. Uh, if people are jumping around all the, um, it's okay if more people need to be added, okay? Even then, it, they should be added at the end. Um, but, um, so that's why I thought, uh, yeah, so I don't know if my memory is the same as what Zoom recorded. So maybe Zoom just says, I have these frames that I need to somehow fit into this video, and I'll do this in the cloud, right? And who knows which order puts these things to, uh, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if it was one picture, it can slice it up, obviously, right? But it's just many independent pictures. So it has some liberty in shuffling them around, assuming that, you know, the order does not have information, right? But if the order of the participants actually has information, then basically Zoom is screwed at that point, right? Because they didn't account for something in, in their interface that users might be using it for something, right? You know, there is a very uh, interesting phenomenon, right? So in India, um, uh, so, uh, uh, <clears throat> and now it's actually very common, right? So uh, in India, uh, there, uh, we, uh, a long time ago, right? When cell phones for, first came up, uh, were introduced, uh, you know, it cost money to make a call on a cell phone, right? Uh, and and so people didn't want to didn't want to spend the small amount of money to uh, make make a phone call. Uh, so what they would do was just call the person and hang up immediately, right? Uh, and so they get a ring, and uh, that's it. So uh, and and some people are clever enough to even figure out the number of rings, and they could send information based on one ring, it's me; two rings, it's my daughter, and things like that. Okay, so they, they, I don't know, so some stupid uh, scheme like that, but it actually worked. Like the you know the Bombay parcel scheme, it actually worked flawlessly, and it, it became known as a missed call. Okay, it, a missed call is a way in which you can transmit information um, at zero cost. <laughs> okay, so you know putting it in very formal terms, that's what it is. So missed call. So in fact, we are in fact transmitting information. Think about it, right? We're transmitting information, and, and uh, so. But you know, if a phone company did not uh, uh, did not, well, I don't know. Right? If I was AT and T or some big phone company, I wouldn't think that you know there is an, a use case for my technology, which could in fact become uh, huge in terms of amount of data exchange. Because you know, like, there's a lot, lot more data. It turns out was exchanged via missed calls than on actual calls. <laughs> okay, so if a phone com company did not have the foresight to look at that metadata being exchanged, uh, then they would have lost out on a huge opportunity. Right. Um, so. I'm not, I'm not saying that's the way they should have done it, but uh, I'm saying that there is this thing, right? And, and so, so, you know, shuffling these things around is pretty risky, I think, from, from a, you know, product uh, viability point of view, I think. I don't know. Because, I mean, if you give users some predictability, what I found uh, is that users will somehow make use of it, right? Um, because you don't have to make use of it. As I, as I, as I, see, I think that is something that I found very interesting in the way that I build things is that I don't have to find use for everything I do. It just needs to be pretty and beautiful and nice to look at, but I don't have to find any use, but it has to be predictable. A predictable meaning that, you know, users can think of it, users can see a part of it and, and they don't have to see the rest of it, right? They can imagine the rest of it. That's what predictability means, right? So if you look at, you know, a, a beautiful painting, right? Even if part of it is obscured, your main mind kind of fills in the rest of it, right? But if it's a jumbled mess, your mind can't fill in the rest of it. So your mind has to do more work in looking at a jumbled mess than if it was to look at something that's pretty and predictable. So um, I figured that I think the best way, in fact, to produce, you know, uh, to inject some use into a product in, in which you can see the use is just to make it pretty and, you know, useful uh, so that if it's pretty and useful, what I find is that people will find a use for it, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, so you know, just like a flower on the roadside, if you find it abandoned, it's beautiful, you want to take it home and put it in a vase, right? So, and uh, so I, I, I figured that, you know, just if, if you make your product predictable in some way, uh, then users will emerge. Users will emerge out there because people out there are not stupid. People want to use anything that's predictable out there to improve the quality of their own lives. Yes, that's, I mean, that's as humans, that's what we do, right? If, if there's something that I can predict that's gonna happen, I'm just gonna see how to use it to my advantage to, to make my, myself or some other people happy, essentially, right? So the predictability is what we're all looking for. And, and, and so if, <clears throat> if the product just offers some predictable behavior, as long as it has 
any value at all, right? So this is even aesthetic value. It's okay. And people will find utility for it eventually, right? Because they'll say, oh, yeah, I, 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 in fact, for many people, I've seen that, you know, something may actually absolutely have no use at all, right? But it's actually very pretty, right? It's very pretty, but actually absolutely has no use, right? And, and, and then I ask them sometimes, you know, why do you have it there? Uh, and they will come up with some, you know, uh, badass use for it, you know, but not bad, badass use, uh, poor ass reason for, but it, it's some reason, some use, right? Some some rational, some convoluted reason for, under which it was actually is useful, right? And, and it's very clear uh, then, uh, you know, and even to them, I think that uh, the use of it is really not what I just described, but it is just my excuse, not a use, right? It's, in, it's an excuse rather than a use. And say, you know, I have a use for it. That's why I have it. But the real truth of it, I have it because it's so pretty out there, right? So, uh, so like like that, I think. Um, hey, I don't know. That's a predictability of our products and and bits and sequences. Uh, and I think, uh, well, I don't know how it all ties together. Uh, well, I successfully managed to keep the airwaves occupied for fifteen minutes. That's good. Uh, and uh, is that it? I I don't know. Is more are more people going to join? Uh, we can just talk, you know, we can start, we can talk. I think most of us are here. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, in fact, I recognize most of you because uh, I think, uh, yeah, I actually recognize most of you, except Ashwa, you were in here last class, right? Were you here last class, Ashwa? I don't remember you, right? But I think I remember oh, almost sorry. everybody else. Every, everybody else here. Um, yeah, everybody, in fact, well, almost the same background even. Um, even, you know, Kylie, you were out in the open. I remember you were out in the open. Yeah, yeah, you're still out in the open. Okay, uh, all right. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, that's, that's great. Um, yeah, Dwayne and, hey, where's Nathan? Um, I, I thought I saw him, Nathan. I, I, saw, I saw Nathan last month. All right, uh, anyway, we, I, I, we don't have to, you know, prattle on and on uh, like this. Uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if any of you want to discuss a data representation issue, something to do with syllabus even that's fine um we'll actually start uh talking about data representation uh in, in a more focused way at 8 30 okay just remind me at 8 30. Uh, until 8 30 we can just keep it loose okay but you have to talk about something to do with data representation, computer science something like that um but let's give people a little bit of time right because it's kind of winter and all so um we'll start at 8 30. okay so until then Feel free. I hope there's nobody in the waiting room because I'm pretty sure I reconf. Well, you guys are here, uh, but let's let's just make sure there's some silly. Um, you know, I, I hope there's no other setting that I missed. Everybody can join for the first five minutes, but everybody else after that goes into a waiting room. No. <laughs> that would be like a the, the the worst kind of feature I can build into a meeting a meeting product. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, all right. So uh, <clears throat> you guys, you guys can talk. Just talk, okay? Uh, Yu Yang, you just join on your iPhone. Hey, by the way, Yu Yang. Hey, Carla, you weren't here last class, right? Hey, Carla, were you here last class? Um, kind of. I'm not too sure if I was in the right. Uh, I don't remember mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to class. Uh, all right. You got to watch the video. Okay. You got you got to watch the video from last class. Make sure, make sure, because these are the only two classes we're going to talk about data representation. Because next class on, it's we're just going to assume you know it, and and then what happens is that if you don't know data representation, it'll basically take you, it'll take you sometimes, right? It'll take you half an hour to get past some concept later on when it should have just taken you like ten seconds just because of one. And that's frustrating. That half an hour is really frustrating. So I'm saying you know, the greatest recommendation I can give you guys and pass it on to all of your classmates who are missing today is just get solid with data representation, okay? Because data representation is one way, if you're mastering this area is one way in which you can save yourself frustration down the line, right? It's not like you're gonna get you know a check mark or two credits for this and that's total nonsense, right? The reason you wanna master data representation is because you wanna take, have an easy right later on. Uh, and that is the reason, okay? Um, and uh, so that's what it is in many classes. And, and I think it will be a lot easier on students generally because it wasn't like, it, because that wasn't my mindset, right? So uh, my mindset was, I don't know, it, it wasn't like now. 
right? Uh, and I was thinking more like a student or what I think is a student anyway, right? Um, in the first few classes, I always think, you know, easy stuff. I just need to get through this and then get to the real meat of the matter later on in, you know, lectures eight, nine and so on, okay? Um, I never, so I just need to, I just need to, uh, what I used to do, that was my mindset and I hope that is not your mindset, okay? When I was a student. Uh, just getting through the first few weeks somehow so that, you know, later on, by the time it's a midterm, now I got to go, you know, full steam on the subject. That is the total wrong attitude because what most instructors uh, or teachers are trying to do in the first few weeks is that they know, right, come midterm, it's going to be really, really hard. It's going to be rough terrain, okay? So right now, just know how to navigate rough terrain so that you won't have to tear your feet in six weeks' time. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, you, so you're going to have to climb the mid mid semester mid quarter mountain anyway. Okay, you can either do it with your boots or without your boots, and the first couple of weeks are going to show you how to wear your boots. Now, a lot of people might say, "Well, I don't need any boots. All right, I'll just go right to the mountain because I got this drone I can hang on to or something like that." Okay, yeah, well, you're welcome to try that. But if you just want to say, you know, it doesn't matter. What if my drone drone battery fails or something? Right, I still need to be able to scale the mountain. It was a couple of weeks, and it's not here. And I, I found this, you know, even when I talk to my friends in teaching math and other classes, uh, people take the first few weeks easy. <laughs> and uh, and in fact, and from a student's point of view, I think it's set up very badly too. Uh, because, you know, if you think about it, the first couple of weeks is when you really get a chance to go to multiple classes and find out what you want to do, you know, jump between classes and I'm going to drop this and take that and, you know, and that is the worst kind of time to take away from your, uh, you know, focus in a subject. Uh, so you should actually focus more during the first couple of weeks, because that is a time when you say, all right, if I'm ever applying to stay in this area, this is the time I get to, uh, make it easy for me downstream. Otherwise, I'm not gonna stay in this area because nobody who ever tried to climb Mount Everest uh, with bare feet ever succeeded, <laughs> I think, all right? Okay, again, a fact that you can probably look up and say, hey, you're wrong, okay? Um, but, <clears throat> uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. So I, I think the first couple of weeks, you, it's, it's very important. And uh, Carla, <laughs> thank you for, uh, you know, uh, uh, for that. And I uh, do watch the video um, and all of you guys. Okay. Uh, hey, you, Yang, uh, I thought you were on a phone. Are you not on a phone now? Oh, is this, is this the image you're projecting from a phone? You, Yang? You? Hi. How do you, how do you pronounce your name? You or you, Yang? Oh, you, you Yang. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say hey, you. Uh, all right. So um, this is what you're getting from a phone? No, I mean, uh, laptop. Okay, all right. Because yeah. I was about to say that all of you, right? Um, but try your best not to do this on a mobile device, all right? Uh, you may, if you're tempted to do it on iPad, I mean, you can do it on iPad for the first couple of lectures because it's data representation, you can use a pencil. Um, but after that, I highly discourage you from doing this on an iPad or a phone, uh, or even, you know, doing quests on a phone or an iPad. Um, well, I, they're not mobile friendly, first of all. But you know, uh, or a mobile, yeah, or midterm, or uh, a final, or your final, which I think, I don't know, May maybe maybe an iPad is okay for your exams. Yeah, but not not when you're in a bus, okay. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, that 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 was it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this this time I'm actually trying to record it in the cloud. Uh, rather than on my phone, on, on my uh, PC. So we'll see if that makes a difference in, in the speed at which this can get to you guys. All right. Um, because maybe, you know, a cloud to YouTube transfer may just be a checkbox. And then that could happen much faster than from my home to YouTube. Right. So. All right. Um, if, if you guys have any questions, do you have any questions? Data representation, this class, how it's all going to go. Um, all right. Last chance, last chance because next next week uh, we're gonna start coding. Initially, we'll just do really, really simple ones. Actually, I had a really good idea today. Uh, damn, I almost forgot. Uh, oh, actually, I did forget maybe. Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, before, all we need to do is, I, I, maybe I just need to remember by Tuesday. Uh, yeah, something to do with what we can calculate. Oh yeah, 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 actually I, yeah, I remember. Yeah, what we can do is for the, on Tuesday, we can just write a simple program. Someone, one of you could take the screen uh, and write a program. And I was thinking, um, you know, I, this, I, I, yeah, yeah, this is how I came 
to this idea. Um, you know, I was thinking, wow, this uh, laptop I've, uh, I'm running uh, the Zoom meetings on. In fact, you know, I'm not even running on maximized window, maximizing my window, and I've got pretty good visibility, right? So, uh, yeah, okay, now it's visible. Yeah, I can see, see you guys much better too. All right. Um, so uh, I, I'm thinking, wow, this is really cool. Uh, and I'm getting, I'm, in, in fact, each of the windows I'm looking at right, uh, is no more than a, 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 a stamp. <laughs> Ages since I've actually used a physical stamp, but it's no more than, I don't know, uh, what, a couple of inches by one inch, right? And yet I can get a highly detailed uh, view. Uh, I can see all of the artwork behind Brian's, uh, you know, on Brian's wall, it's really cool, right? Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and I can see all of that. I'm thinking, well, this, you know, this computer, this MacBook Air that I'm running it on, um, no, not MacBook Air, it's just MacBook Pro, this is given to my, me by Foothill, Foothill when I joined. And uh, when is it? It was 20, in fact, they gave it to me even before the, uh, when I started as an agent, maybe. No, uh, uh, something like that. So it's like seven years old now, right? It's seven years and I'm still using it. It's like yesterday, the keyboard, everything looks brand spanking new. And I'm thinking uh, um, that's uh, really cool because electronics in general um, should, you know, everything ages at a different rate. And uh, so, so uh, the number the number of space-time units each thing, each object covers is probably different. Like a dog, you know, for, for us it's seven years, uh, for a dog it would be seven times seven, 49 years. So I was thinking that for our next class, we could just basically come up with a whole bunch of objects, uh, human, dog, uh, iPhone, iPad, uh, PC, XT, you know, games like Fortnite, all right, uh, again, ancient games like uh, Pac-Man, right? Maybe 10 or 15 different objects in a spreadsheet and share them uh, in Reddit. And then what we can do is that uh, anyone who takes a screen, uh, in fact, what we should do is, I think there is some um, uh, editor, uh, shared editor where multiple people can edit at the same time. So we'll create one uh, big ass main program. Okay, and then have lots of comments there and say, okay, okay, this is, uh, you know, Brian's expression. Uh, this is, uh, you know, Ashwat's expression. This is, you know, uh, Carla's and Jennifer's and Dwayne's and so on and so forth. And under each one of them, um, you're gonna say, uh, at the top, we're gonna pick a random number of years for humans. Let's say you know, two years for humans. Uh, how long, how many years is it for each of these things, right? So you say two years for humans is how many dog years, how many iPhone years and how many. And so we can actually calculate that based on some discussions we have, right? Uh, or, you know, uh, the other person who gets assigned that. Uh, and all of you can code at the same time, right? And then we can run it and say, uh, and it'll generate a random number for the human years. And then and tell us each uh, uh, how many uh, of the different years each one of those is. Is that a good idea? I don't know. I, it, it seemed good when I ran it through my head. Okay, um, but we'll try it out. And if it doesn't work out, we'll just branch it to something else. Is, is that okay? So each one of you can uh, try and imagine something, right? Each one of you can try and imagine um, something that you want to be. Uh, well, you know, something that is some object which has a different show, uh, you know, uh, space-time coverage uh, rate or something like that, okay? So maybe, you know, two years for humans, maybe you use, use a year for human as, as your base, right? Uh, so, and, and a dog is seven times that, okay? So maybe, I don't know, um, so uh, no, nobody gets to do, a, you know, a human, obviously, that's gonna be the random number. So um, let's say, you know, Brian chooses to be the, you know, I'll do the comment for the, you know, dog, you can decide how, however you want to do that, right? And, and we can even decide on this on the fly, on, on Tuesday when we're coding, right? Because it's going to be one window and everybody's going to be coding in it, right? So there'll be a comment that says, this is Brian's expression. We're going to try and see how many, uh, how many, what's the relation between human years and dog years, okay? Maybe Brian does that, all right? Uh, and maybe you have, right? And there's another comment further down uh, while he's editing this, and maybe you have editing this, and you'd say, you have comment, um, it would maybe say, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to try and see what's the relation between human years and iPad years or something like that, right? Or it's just something like that, right? And, and different, and there's no limit to how many of those we can have, right? And at some point we'll say, okay, guys, enough fun, okay? Enough of coding fun, let's go run it and see what the hell happens, okay? And, and then we'll say, uh, that's it, okay? We'll say, we'll save it and run it. <clears throat> and nobody's allowed to run it, okay? Nobody's allowed to click the run button to see what it's going to look like, okay? Everybody just gets to code and imagine what it's going to look like when we run it eventually, right? And then we all get to run it at the same time and look at the results at the same time, okay? And maybe marvel at the same time or laugh at the same time. So uh, yeah, that seems like a good plan for next week or at least Tuesday, okay? And we'll come up with a, a good plan like that for Thursday maybe, okay? So I, I am pretty sure some other interesting project will blossom out of whatever we do on Tuesday. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll uh, have a very good feel 
for what we can do on, um, you know, on Thursday and going forward. Okay, so uh, and I think you know even if you all group code, that's all you know. It's the same as live coding, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. That's also fine. Okay, everything counts for participation. Right? So all of that is really cool. Is, is everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. You gotta raise your hand and and not like Ali. Okay, I don't know if she's raising a hand or not. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So uh, all right. So uh, yeah. Is everybody okay with that? Raise your hand so I can see. All right. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, thank you. Great, okay. Well, even though Jennifer only managed a couple of fingers, I can, yeah, right, okay. Uh, I get the idea. Um, all right. Hey, Carla, did you agree? Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Uh, that's, that's great. Awesome. Hey, Noah, what is that behind you? Is that, a, that, is that an artwork uh, of, of, of some person? Uh, yellow and red and... Yeah, it's some posters from like way back when. Wow. It's just, yeah, well, it actually looks very nice. I, but on the mirror, it actually looks much nicer, I think, yeah. because it's got the lighting and everything in the right position. For me, in, in the zoom, uh, zoom square that I have, the zoom rectangle, okay, of a couple of inches. Because you know how uh, when, when my uh, kids were uh, tiny, um, there was this, um, this is, um, thing that they were fascinated by. And I was also utterly fascinated by, uh, and I think it were, they were called dinkums. Have you heard of dinkums? Shrinkum dinkums, shrinkum dinkums. Have you heard of shrinkum dinkums? Wow, okay, cool. All right, so I, uh, really cool. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure you can get them, right? You just go to a dollar store or something like that. I think this is mass produced in China, I'm sure, okay? Because I, you just need to go to some place like that and you can get a lot of them. And dinkums are really cool because they look like regular artwork, right? They get scribbled by kids. Um, and in fact, you can do your own artwork too. It's like a sheet of paper. Yeah, that's what it is. It's just uh, translucent dinkum paper. You can actually go to Amazon or Google and just say translucent dinkum paper. You can just buy them on Amazon, like a sheet, like a square meter for some, right? And you can take your uh, pen, okay? A Sharpie, a couple of Sharpies, um, and, and then draw whatever you want, okay? And it'd be total nonsense, right? Uh, and, and the genius of uh, dinkum, I think, was figuring out that no matter what the nonsense is, if you just shrink everything down proportionally, okay, it doesn't matter what the nonsense is inside, but, but the surrounding order around it, when you shrink it down is now enough for the eyes and mind to grok. And so they look at that order and, the, and what the nonsense it is, the, the nonsense that we've drawn around it just becomes additional decoration. So it, everything becomes pretty, right? So, uh, and, and all your lines become really razor thin, right? Like fine font. Uh, so you can draw with, you know, with a Sharpie or even a flatboard marker uh, and everything gets shrunk down into thin lines and it's really crisp because, you know, the ink also gets condensed, right? So it's really crisp and, and it's really beautiful. Uh, so like that, I think maybe Zoom has uh, hit upon something here, okay? Not just Zoom, uh, uh, you know, it's a way in which to create artwork, right? It's to, um, uh, they've done this a long time ago, right? Because they've taken different pictures and then uh, algorithmically try to figure out that, you know, I'm going to, um, um, you know, make a, a composite picture uh, where I'm going to uh, uh, tile all these individual pictures, like millions of individual pictures, right? And tile them all together and make this composite picture, uh, adjusting the luminosity and things like that. So that, that kind of thing has been around for ages, right? We used to do that even before, uh, you know, fancy graphics. We used to do that with ASCII characters, right? Because if you look at the characters uh, on, on your device, on your device, uh, each character takes a different amount of ink, right? Like zero takes up a little bit, you know, there's a big white hole in the middle, all right? Uh, maybe a, a period only takes, I don't know, four pixels, okay? Uh, four pixels. Uh, yeah, obviously, space is completely white, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, eight, four. Uh, this is some, some letters, okay? There must be some letters where there's a whole lot of uh, ink. So uh, I, I think uh, what we figured out very, very early, right? So when we had dot, dot matrix printers, right? This is, you know, way back when, uh, even I can't remember, right? When I was in school, maybe, um, I've seen these uh, things called uh, the dot matrix printers. Have, has any, any of you seen dot matrix printers? No? No? All right, okay, cool. See, dot matrix printers are really cool because um, uh, uh, they're just like typewriters because you have a, a ribbon uh, and then in a typewriter, uh, uh, you've seen typewriters, you know how typewriters work, right? Because you have a, a ribbon that is soaked in ink and then you have a hammer, right? With, with the letter that you want to impress on the paper in reverse, okay? And then you hit the ink and then through the, through the uh, tape, you hit the paper and, and then you just mark that letter in the reverse of the reverse, which is correct. Okay, so that's how a typewriter works. It makes my, and so in order for a typewriter to work, you need a different hammer for each of the letters, 
each of the letters has to have a different hammer, right? So, and that is, and, but the, the, the advantage of that is that now, because it's going to be uh, the same thing, you can actually get it, you know, a die that is done by a beautiful craftsman, okay? And you discover all these beautiful, in, 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 in incredible fonts, right? Uh, like calligraphy, right? Uh, you know, maybe that's how calligraphy was born, right? And in very early days. But so, and, and so you can get these things. But the, the genius of the dot matrix mirror was that, you know, well, well, you know, no matter what the design is, like Don Knuth, right? Uh, so uh, you can just go right down to the, uh, to the detail and see that everything is basically just a sequence of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, blank or a dot, right? So I don't need an entire hammer of the entire letter A, right? All I need is just a, a, a little needle, right? One dot. And then, uh, and I need some way of moving that dot around. And so if I define this grid uh, <clears throat> as, you know, uh, I don't know, eight dots by eight dots, all right, 64 dots here, right? All I need is basically just 64 signals of some kind to say, well, you know, should I, should the hammer fire here, 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 here? So 64, you know, switches that say, should the hammer fire now or not? Yes? And as long as I have the ink, right? And then the paper and the hammer, it, given a really, really quick operation, because you can do it, right? Even electrically, electromechanically, you can do that really, really fast, right? Uh, I'm not even talking about laser here. So uh, that's what the dot matrix printers used to do. Uh, so this pin used to be retracted and, hit, and it would hit the paper many, many times a second so that you can actually see the letter A uh, impressed on the paper as though it was a single hammer when it was, traced out by multiple dots uh, happening really quickly. Does, does that all make sense? Okay, now, uh, so that is what is called a dot matrix printer because it's printing a, a dot matrix, a matrix of eight by eight dots, right? So it's printing it, printing it, and you can control uh, uh, which dots in the matrix are on and off by sending it a signal. Yeah, at, at the appropriate times. Does, does that all make sense? Because it kind of all ties into, ties into our data representation, right? So that's, that's one of what I wanna uh, make sure. Well, I don't know, maybe we've ta started talking a little bit about data representation. Well, it's 835. Does, so does, 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 that, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah? I don't know, I'm not getting any feedback. Okay, so uh, maybe I think we just need to go to a, uh, you know, uh, get to a um, um, stage where you guys are coding, right? And, and I'm just talking through uh, from time to time and I can, uh, and, and walk, walk you through some of the stuff, I think that would be funner for you guys, right? Because I don't know, uh, maybe now you're just falling asleep. I, I have no idea. Maybe I'm just like a, you know, like a record in the background that you switch on when you go. Is that like me? Unfortunately, I got a lot of YouTube videos now. If you ever have trouble going to sleep, but not, no, it's not like that. But I'm saying that if, if uh, some frequency, some, because, you know, this funny thing was uh, when I was uh, back at SRI. Professor? Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you in the middle no, of, no, but no, I had no, a no, question no, for a while. <laughs> um, it's actually about data representation, if you don't mind me, I'm just switching over there. Sam? Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I was trying to look for the rectangle, for the active rectangle, sorry. Okay, good. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. So oh. not someone else who's sitting with Sam, yes? Pardon? Who's talking right now? Sam. It's, you can't see my mouth moving because I have my mask on, but it's Sam. That's why, okay, all right, cool. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I had a question about data representation, specifically converting between like binary and hexadecimal, um, because I know that the table is there in the lecture, but do you have a better, like a better way to just like oh, totally. memorize yeah, totally. it? Yeah, I um, because right now way. I'm literally just counting on my fingers. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, that, there is absolutely a totally, uh, we can do that, right? We can do that in class. Can you remember that? You know, when someone picks up a screen, maybe we can do one of those. How about that? Yeah? Okay, cool, thank you. So we can do that. And so that also build the intuition for, you know, what, what numbers are and what the bits are and how to map between them. Um, that's all really cool. Uh, yeah, th thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Remember that and, and, and bring... Um... So yeah, when, when you talk, uh, Sam, uh, just, you know, raise your hand or something like that because you're we wearing a mask. Uh, My hand had been raised in Zoom for a while. Hmm? My hand had been raised in Zoom for. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't I? I yeah, that's. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, I tend not to look at the Zoom, um, Zoom icons, right? So just raise your yeah. physical hand. Just okay. yeah. Uh, but you were able to raise your physical hand, right? Yes. Yeah, I can. Uh, no, no worries. Yeah, if, if you do that, I think uh, the reason for that is I think it kind of um, it, it uh, taps into a 
uh, you know, more, um, uh, yeah, because, you know, in physical lectures, I, I, I don't have to, it, yeah, I don't have to, it's no, it's not a new adaptation. I, I can, um, it's physical lectures, people just raise their hands and they talk. All right, uh, and you can do that, right? You can do that anytime, anytime uh, I am talking, uh, uh, I don't know about other people, but I hope, you know, anytime uh, I'm talking, all you need to do is just raise your hand, okay? Raise your hand and, and just say, and I'll stop, okay? And you can talk. Uh, or I'll, I'll, I'll at least be able to say, can, can you give me a minute more or something like that, all right? So I'll get a minute from you and talk, but if you raise your hand, and I'll have to talk. And if I'm not looking at the screen, if I'm not looking at the screen, I'm looking at the floor or looking out there or Peter or something like that. And, and uh, oh, I actually, we actually have, oh yeah, yeah. When I say Peter sometimes, sorry, Peter, I don't mean you, so I say, yeah, isn't, right? You, you have to use a context, okay? Because there's a squirrel here. Uh, I don't know, I, mean, I don't even know if it's the same squirrel, right? Maybe they all have a, you know, a conference up there saying, okay, now this time you go, you're Peter and you're Peter and you're, this is a bunch of Peters. They all come at different times and get, you know, uh, goodies from me. Uh, and I think they're all Peter, who knows that, right? So, but I call him Peter. Um, um, hey, we actually named uh, named uh, the, the school during the very first uh, Zoom lecture that we had uh, on YouTube. So uh, it's it's uh, out there. Um, anyway, so uh, saying you should just feel free to raise your hand and talk. And uh, I'm totally happy. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what was I saying? Uh, so you did a representation. Um, yeah. Anybody should feel free. But is I does is. Is everybody okay with the idea uh, of how a data, how a letter like A, right? Like A can simply be represented, right? As a sequence of 64 signals to the hammer, the dot like hammer, right? Um, dot, dot like hammer. All we need to do is just tell the hammer, right? Fire, don't fire, fire, don't fire, right? One, zero, one, zero, yeah? We just need to give it electricity, no, elect no. we need to give it a pulse of current, no pulse of current, pulse of current, no pulse, like we can do that, right? We can do millions of times, billions of times like that for a second, right? And so we're only constrained by the speed at which the, the mechanical motion of that hammer from one place to another. In fact, it's even better if you have a, 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 a matrix of 64 hammers. You know, how, how much money is it gonna to cost to make 64 different hammers, you know, put them in there. So you don't even have the mechanical energy. So you don't have to account for the inertia of movement, right? So all you need to do is have 64 connections in the back and basically have, you know, your A here. And as soon as you write the A, uh, all the right hammers will fire, bam, like that in one go, right? So you just get the A. Does that make sense? That is how a dot matrix dot matrix experiment works. Okay, and, but but the the intuition there, I think, is not to, to understand how a dot matrix works. Yes, because that's history, right? It's it's history. It's, you guys don't even know it, right? Even even I just have a big memory of how these dot matrix printers work, right? Um, I think I think that's how. It's not single hammer, right? It is actually a a a, 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 yeah, a, a pad of hammers, I think. Right? Yeah, I think I, I I took I took one apart uh, in our lab uh, when I was at school because they were going to be for some some reason. So that's why I, I think I remember that it was actually a, a lots of hammers, not just one hammer moving around. Um, um, but the, the intuition to take away is uh, I think that no matter what the shape is. Um, we can we can find out uh, we can just represent that shape as a series of ons and offs, zeros and ones. Yes or no? Now you got to raise your hand this time. If you agree or don't agree, right? Am I telling you the the truth or not? Right. So no matter what the shape is, I should be able to represent it, right? Um, using a sequence of uh, if the shape is finite, this is a finite finite size shape. I I should be able to represent it as a sequence of ons and offs because a hammer right can basically recreate the shape by stamping out chunks of it stamping out chunks and chunks of it each chunk you know has been stored as ones and zeros somewhere right what what hammer should fire and what hammer should not fire okay then move over here okay load another pattern into memory right now that tells you which other which which hammer should fire right so you get a different shape so if you want to draw a really complex shape like that, all you have to remember is basically, you know, uh, in, in this location, in that rectangle, I just need to draw that line, 
right? But in this location, I need to draw that line, but the bottom here will actually connect here. So you don't have to worry, right? You just store all these chunks like that somewhere. On a notebook, you just basically say, on page one, I'll tell you what to impress when the hammer you know, when, when, you know, when with the dot matrix pad, uh, pad hits the paper at this location. Now move one to the right, right? Now that's what you should. So on page two tells you what the configuration of the hammer should be. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Well, only Ali is not nodding her head, okay? All right, I don't know, Sean is, I don't know if he's raising his hand or, or stretching, okay? <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, nobody else, uh, nobody else? Um, all right. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, nobody, uh, Ashwath, Dwayne, Jennifer, uh, no fingers, Jennifer. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, okay, Tom, Tom is good. All right, uh, okay, uh, Yu Yang, yeah? I have a question. I, yeah, but Peter, you gotta speak up, okay? You, you good with that? Okay, so I, yeah, okay. All right. In Peter's case, the, the Tom is showing up, right? Because, but uh, Peter, you gotta speak up, okay? Because Tom is not enough. Uh, you gotta yeah, at least sure. say yes or no, yeah? Yeah, got it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. It helps you have multiple voices, okay? Otherwise, it's really a monotonous drone. Like I said, you know, it could be like a lullaby. If I'm the only one who's talking, and it's like, you know, like a podcast rather than it should be like a talk show where there are multiple voices. So if someone is bored with what Oprah is saying all the time, they, they could at least listen to what, you know, her, her participants are saying and say, oh, well, you know, that really makes sense. That's why Oprah brought them here, not to say what she wanted to say to them. Right. So um, and, and so on and so forth. So you don't have to listen to one person and you can listen to multiple people at the same time. Because sometimes I'm going to be, you know, thank, thank you, Sean. OK. And also, like now I have a question. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, I was wondering how like modern printers work, because that's just the dot printers. That's just assume I just assume that. Yeah, that's yeah. Modern, modern printers, printers essentially it is the same. Right. Essentially all the way. That's why dot, dot data representation is so important is essentially ultimately it boils down to how this is going to be represented on finite media, whether that finite media is a magnetic disk or on a paper, right? So the picture one needs to be printed on paper. All you need to do is uh, <clears throat> you have some way of depositing micro granules of color on the, right? If it's a, if it's a photograph, all you need to do for, for a color photo is that, you know, if you look at the micro, microscope, right? In a color photo, you can actually go all the way deep. I don't know you can do that. I've never done it. But you can go all the way deep it was where you get into the dots. And the dots are all just individual colors. Maybe that's silver chromate or silver you know, potassium iodide or something. I don't know. But each one is a different color. Right? Somehow these things are maybe, right? So, <clears throat> or maybe LEDs that have different frequencies of activation. Right? So they're different colors. And they're so tiny that you cannot see the individual colors. They just blend into each other. Right? Now I can say that uh, if I want that green LED in, in position number uh, 4,736,000, right? In my, on my screen, the screen is the same as paper, yes or no, right? Because on, on a piece of paper in today's printers, today's printers, all I need to do is have three different color uh, cartridges, right? Toners, they're called toners, I think, and on laser printers. They're called toners, uh, and uh, I don't know, I'm not a I'm not a printer guy. Maybe some person who I think we actually have a student who who works at uh, HP, right? Hewlett Packard. So may, maybe maybe they know the details. Um, but I think they're called toners, and and the idea is that you can get any of the 65 million colors or whatever the right by just combining these three basic colors in different quantities. So I think that's the idea, right? And then you can algorithmically algorithmically figure out that you know this particular color color needs you know. 27.3% of magenta and, you know, 2% of yellow and so on and so forth. So you mix them all together and that can all be controlled by, you know, electronically. And so what happened in today's printers, if it's an inkjet printer, is basically they have a very fine grain control over how much ink of which color they can deposit in which area. Right? All of that can be driven by programs. So when, when, they, when, when the ink head just sweeps the paper like this, right? All they're doing is that in this row, in this particular very thin slice, way, is a 0 0.01 millimeter, right? What 0.01 inches? That slice, that those are the jets, right? Each each of the ink dots, the jets are that. That's a width. Uh, so so uh, so that slice has how many dots? I don't know. Twenty five thousand dots. I, I'm just pulling a number. Number. So twenty five thousand um, of these guys need to have uh, receive the signal, 
right? That green guy needs to say, stay on. That, you know, red guy needs to stay off. This green guy needs to stay off. So all of that signal, all of those signals are sent exactly the same way to the print head, like uh, dot matrix printers used to get that one character a long time ago. So it's all exactly the same. So that's why I say, if you understand data representation, it's the same thing all the way through, right? So even if you want to print a, print something in, in, in the James Webb telescope that you know opened up a couple of days ago, right? Or if you want to print something on, on, on a rover in Mars, okay? Um, so it's, it's all the same. You just have to break it down into a sequence of steps that the remote end can actually map into some sequence of actions. That's all, yes? And it doesn't, doesn't have to be bits and bytes, right? You can have a secret code. You can have a secret code. So then in, in wartime, uh, that is what they do, right? So they just have a secret code that nobody else understands. And, and this person is given a message. They'll translate that into the secret code. Nobody else un can understand it, and, but only that other person can understand that, right? So, um, so that you can have secret codes like that, but it's not, a, it's not a generally useful code, right? Bits generally useful these days because everybody, all of the devices that we have, they understand bits. And bits are basically, you know, um, just activations. Whether a particular uh, you know part of the circuit carries current or not, that is the basis of uh, everything that is you know all discrete computing devices today, right? So is whether current is passing through uh, something or not is our current notion of what a bit is, right? With quantum computers, is uh, the idea is different. Actually, Michael Losev probably still teaches uh, quantum computing. Um, he started teaching this uh, teaching it at Foothill. Maybe it's still an offer. But I think he probably teaches it as a hobby. Um, maybe he teaches it at San Jose. You know, he's retired and all. He just comes back to teach. Anyway, so um, it's, it's, that's it, it's, there. You may say it's um, you know it's not the flow of electricity that determines whether this is on or off, but rather whether this electron is spinning in this direction or this direction. Right, because oh, so you can have multiple spins on the electron, and you can say that that is in fact what tells me whether a bit is one or zero. Now that is not quantum computing, right? So I said that is still discrete computing, just taken to a whole another level, where you are still using discrete states to tell you. But the the I think right, so uh, because I'm not an expert in this area, but the 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 the, the, the genius there comes in uh, comes out comes in figuring out that you know you can actually extract information from the probability distribution that the electron will be in one state versus another right and actually influence and tight uh, uh, entanglements I, I think we have experts in uh, in at football that you can talk to about these things right at some point if you're interested enough in these areas that's what i mean but i, I the basis uh, I, but even if you do want to use my uh, do michael's course um yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 if, if you do, even if you do want to do that quantum computing course with him, uh, I would still highly recommend that you do CS2A or at least a data representation, right? Because you need to be utterly, totally, utterly con conversant with data representation, bits and bytes, right? Uh, because ultimately, that's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter whether it's con current, right? Which is what we use now, flow or absence of current. That's what we use. Or it could be something else. It could be whether, you know, if water is flowing through a pipe or not. That's perfect too, right? Or you could say, you know, I want to transmit bits and bytes to someone else. And maybe Sam and I have an agreement that when my hand is up there, it's a one. When, it, when my hand is down here, it's a zero, right? So maybe that is, a, that's, a, that's, that's also bits and bytes. So, but uh, the, the only thing we need to be comfortable about is that that's all we need. We don't need anything more, right? The, the only thing we need is, is that is that doubling, right? Basically going from one to two. When you go from one to two, you have at your disposal everything, right? Because you'd be able to try and, uh, represent any uh, number of discrete quantities um, because then you can just keep doing that. Uh, that, that. That is my take on this. Data representation is very useful, not just in CS2A, but even if you do want to go on to quantum computing, you'll see well, those are the, that's a limit of data representation using discrete states, right? So can I go beyond that? Can I go beyond the discrete states of the, uh, right? Because you're not dealing with discrete states anymore. You're talking about stochastic states when you, when you come to you know, quantum phenomena, right? So can you extract information from stochastic states? Continuous distributions, not discrete distributions, yeah? Uh, and uh, because, you know, statistically, Continuous distributions also have information. Yes, yes. The, the amount of information contained in anything is directly related to how surprising it is. Yes or no? 
right? Because if I told you something that is really, really obvious, you'd say, yeah, yeah, old news, man. You know, I, I, know, I know that, you know, the moment I was born, my dad told me the sun rises in the east, okay? So if I told you, yeah, you know what? You come to see us today, 170 bucks, here's your valuable piece of knowledge. This is super useful information. The sun rises in the east. Okay, all right, there you go. That's your $170 worth. You can go home now, right? You're gonna say that is total useless shit, right? You know, that's like 170 bucks for dying for useless information. So you say that is no information at all. And it's no information because it is not surprising to you. Yeah? Well, so what we want is that we pay money to be surprised, whether it's a magic show or a university or a college or a school, right? We just pay money to be surprised. Yeah, plus surprise in a pleasant way most of the time, hopefully, but surprise in a useful uh, way that will make our downstream lives easier. And um, so I, I think that, uh, what was I going to, information, information is basically the amount of surprise. And, and so if you have a uniform distribution, uniform distribution means is very, everything is equally likely. I, so these are statistical terms, not absolutely necessary for uh, CS uh, 2A. Yes, and I'm happy to not talk about any of that. If you guys don't want me to, just raise your hand and say, just go on, okay? Just let's skip that and I will do that. But it's useful in building an intuition about computers and information in general, right? Because ultimately, when it comes to commodity and things like that, even stocks, when we trade things, we, uh, you know, and we say, this is valuable, right? AT&T, is that valuable? Or gold, is this valuable? We usually have some quantity in mind, right? So AT&T, $28 per share, right? And you can get this is, so you get per share, or you know, even you can buy fractional number of shares, but you know how much you're getting. Gold, right? So many grams of gold, right? Or diamonds, buy the diamond and carrot and all. I don't know what kinds of measures they have. Everything we find, buy, we buy in measures, all right? Uh, so why shouldn't, but we pay good money for information. In fact, we pay more money for information than for any other commodity in the world, right? Think about it, right? Information is the, the most expensive and the most valuable thing in the whole damn world. So if you can corner information or at least have a great deal of control over how information flows, you also basically have a lot of, you know, provide you use it for good, that's good, right? But you have a lot of control. And um, so, uh, uh, what was I going with that? So information is useful. So if it is useful, um, then it needs to have uh, a unit, right? You can't say this is information, that's information. You can say, well, which is, which is more information, right? So the question to ask is, uh, so Claude Shannon at at and Bell Labs um, was the person we most recently remember, right? Many people have had this intuition before, but I think the uh, Shannon was the person who actually formalized that very beautifully in his master's thesis, right? Uh, at, uh, I don't know, was it Princeton? One of those places, right? Uh, on the East Coast. And, um, uh, and East Coast, uh, well, yeah, hey, where is, uh, where is, uh, uh, who is the other guy? Um, who was uh, who asked me that East Coast question last week? He's not here. He was wearing that cap too. Um, I, I, I forget his name. It's maybe start with Dan. I remember when he comes. Okay, uh, what was I talking about? The information, right? So, um, so if, if it's uniform, everything is equally likely. There's no information there, right? So, so uh, there's no particular event tells you uh, I am more likely to happen than something else. So you would say there's no information there, yes? However, however, if there's perturbation, right? If it's not uniform anymore, right? And it is peaked at one or more places. So you go to a race and there's 16 horses, right? And all of the horses run exactly the same speed. And, uh, and each of the jockeys says, bet on me, bet on me, bet on me. Right? Uh, so is any of, them, any of them giving you useful information there? No, right? Because they're all equally likely. However, if one of the jockeys has a trick up a sleeve, right? And maybe he's got a carrot and he can dangle it in front of his horse or something like that, okay? Uh, and, and so, uh, and he tells you that. Is that useful information or not? Yeah? You'd be, so you'd be willing to pay a lot of money for that? Yes? Okay, all right, well, I don't know. Maybe we're not gamblers here. No, nobody's even nodding their heads. Maybe you guys are just falling asleep. Okay, all right, only Sam is not nodding. Uh, all right, so, um, uh, so Sam, is, is your full name Sam or Samantha? Just Sam. Just, just, just Sam? Okay, so that's how you want to be, to be addressed? Yes, Okay. that's right, my cool. full name. Uh, all right, cool, no, no worries. Uh, and uh, who else is uh, agreeing, right? So nobody, nobody else is agreeing with what I say. 
So I, I don't know if I should move ahead. But uh, essentially, what I'm trying to say is that you know, if it's uniform, there's no information. But if it's peaked, right, that is useful information. So we say that the amount of information is equal to the probability of the event, right? If the event is unlikely, right, then it has more information, right? If it's just as likely as everything else, there's no information. Does, does it make sense, right? But that is a way in which you quantify it, right? Maybe it's not the absolute best way. Well, actually, you know, you can, but uh, Shannon um, basically established a formal way in which we can say, that one thing is more informative than another thing, which we didn't used to have a way to do before, right? Because, you know, go to the races, they've been doing that informally by drawing up the odds and saying, well, these are the odds of that horse winning, you know, bet on that filly and sort of nonsense like that. But it's, a, you know, that's all data that's private and they guard it, but they, but that's why it's valuable, right? It's valuable because they control that information. And uh, gambling houses, they know the probability distributions, right? And, and they, can, they, they can make sure that the distribution is, um, you know, it's, it's not perfectly uniform, right? It's very close to uniform, but it's not uniform. But the thing is a gambling house has 100% visibility into exactly what's going on. So it can make use of that uniform uh, plus or minus delta. That change in the, the distribution is actually worth money. But because someone has micro visibility into something, they can leverage and monetize the delta. That doesn't make sense. So even without being unfair, even, well, I don't know, maybe gambling houses are unfair, right? Um, but, uh, but I'm saying that if they have enough visibility into the system of how the gambling machine works, it could still be fair within the, within the reason uh, of, uh, within the expectations of a per person that's using the machine, right? Because to me, if I go and gamble, as long as it's fair, well, I'm, right, uh, it, it fair, uh, I, it's okay if it's, you know, uh, uniform plus or minus some delta, which I attribute to chance, right? Most of us are willing to live with that. Now, the, the problem with the gambling uh, house is that if they were to sell the machine and they didn't know the delta, they're as good as me, right? They can't make any money. But because they're making the machine, they actually know the exact delta. <laughs> all right okay all right that's enough of nonsense okay uh, don't let's not talk about that but essentially what i'm trying to say is that the information is contained the value the value of the information, the way to quantify it is basically the, the the likelihood by using the likelihood right so the inverse logarithm you can take the reciprocal the reciprocal doesn't really work right but you can take the um, inverse log okay uh, which really maps nicely you don't have to any, remember any of this right this is all not even cs2c this is really advanced stuff um, but I think it's interesting. That's why I'm mentioning this to you, right? Uh, maybe you learn this in your you know, grad work uh, because information, this is how you quantify it. And this, that's how you deal with it and grok it mathematically. Because otherwise, if you can't do, deal with it mathematically, you know, it's just another interesting artifact, right? Um, because, uh, but now, uh, once you know that you can um, boil it down to something that I can deal with, with my uh, mindless instruments, essentially, that's what we want in mathematics or science. Right, because we want uh, to take any complex object which appears to uh, to us to be unmanageable, right? So, and a theory that we can't understand. Something is happening that we can't understand, right? And we're not comfortable with that. What we want is to make it comfortable for us to understand and work with. And you know, it's so basically you know we have to beat it into submission. And the way we do that is by looking at ways in which we can make it predictable, so that we look at all of the ways in which it can be manipulated. And we want to be able to hold the reins of the horse, as it were. I don't know, I'm just speaking too met metaphorically here, but essentially that's what, what we're going for. Um, even, I don't know, how do we start talking about that, right? So uh, anyway, information uh, flow, uh, ones and zeros. I'm sorry, okay. I think I lost my train of thought there and I'll take too much time to think about what that was. wants. Anyway, that's what it is. I, I, I don't think I should be monopolizing this uh, lecture anymore, okay? I think it's, it's a good time that someone basically took the screen, okay, and, and, and started driving. Uh, let's start with the problem that Sam brought up, okay? And, and then we'll just take, um, maybe Sam can think up a number, okay? Just think up a number. Um, it's, it's not, no, okay, I'm not just putting you on the spot, but when someone takes the screen, right? Think up a number so that I'll say, well, let's take this number that Sam has got and try and convert it from hex to binary or binary to hex and things like that. Yeah. In many different ways and say, what's the intuition behind that and how to, how to do it easy. Is, is that okay with you guys?
Let's do a thumbs up, okay? Let's do a thumbs up, okay? All right. Yu Yang, all right. Uh, Ali and uh, okay, Giovanni, Noah. Someone, someone take the screen, okay? Someone take. Can nobody take the screen? Um, I can take the screen. I just need a second to join on my iPad. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, no worries. Sam, that that's great. Um, yeah, okay. I, in fact, it works out better if you take the screen because you're going to be coming over the number two, right? So what are you using? A tablet? Um, I'm joined on my laptop right now, but I have my iPad open. Oh, cool. All right. Okay. So we're going to see another window from you. Uh, I think so. Uh, just give me a moment to figure out how to do it. No, no worries. How is Zoom going to do it? Because now my screen is perfectly taken up, right? So one more and there'll be three vacant cells. Um, oh, I, mean, I think it'll put it in the middle somewhere. At the bottom middle, maybe. All right, so that's what we're gonna do, guys. Are you all happy with that, right? And we'll start there and go from there. But think of other problems too, right? Think of another, uh, hey, how is that possible? Someone disappeared. We still have a, oh, no, no, no. Oh, Sam, Sam disappeared from the laptop and then appeared yeah. on the iPad. Yeah, I thought um, I thought it would just yeah, 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 no. switch, but it turns out I'd need a second account to do that. So I'm just gonna. Um... But you don't have to do that, right? Pardon? But you don't have to do that, right? I'm not sure what you mean. I would need no, a second I, I, account I mean in order to join. You can have your both. laptop and iPad open at the same time. I can just have my iPad. Um, I can share a a whiteboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. No, no. What I mean is, uh, can can you be multiple person in the same meeting? I'm pretty sure Michael. Was... Um, you can, but you need different accounts. I'm fairly certain. No, no, no. Michael was there last class with the same account. Oh, um, uh, and, because I'm open on the Zoom application, but I think he had multiple Zoom windows open. I see. All right, and never mind. Let's not waste time on that. All right, so to take the screen, and then we'll try and um, do the thing. Okay. Um, I've taken the screen, I guess. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, that's great. Uh, so uh, let's start from the top left corner. And then you say, uh, here's a number in binary. Let's try and convert that to hexadecimal. Um, and I also write it down because uh, I think there may be some people who may just watch the video mute. Um, because mm -hmm. when it comes to the coding and things like that, um, you don't have to disturb your uh, other people, right? So you, you could say, I just want to watch what's going on. So just say what you're going to do and then type it in there. I'm going to try, hey, where are you supposed to? Um, where is, well, because I'm on a different screen, a different, different course here. Um, um, I'm going to yeah, turn my camera off just so it's easier for me if that's all right. So you can yeah, still yeah, see the yeah, screen. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. thank you. Um, so you just want me Your to. The camera's not off, by the way, right? It's just pointing somewhere else. Um, I believe my camera is off, but you can still see my screen. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Please. Okay, yeah, I can see something there that I think you're, it seems like, oh, it's, it's a square icon. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a picture. It's a picture. I thought it was just pointing some uh, some random place in your garden. Uh, no, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see this, thank you. Okay. Um, so you said to just choose a random number and write it down? Yeah, choose choose a random number, you, whatever you want to do. And, and other people should you know correct us if that's not what you want to do, right? So, uh, but let's, this is really fast and we can do it too. Um, so what Sam is trying to do is going to try and write a random number, either in decimal or in binary, right? And we're going to try and convert that from you know whatever she writes into hexadecimal in, in, a, in a couple of different ways, right? And try and get an intuition of how you can do this conversion. Yes or no? Uh, I think I understand. Wait, so write a number, right? Uh, just give me one sec, okay? I'm just playing around with the Zoom thing. It's because I'm trying to make sure. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm trying to see if I can join this meeting. I can join this meeting from my iPad with the same account. Let me see, I should show up there, right? I should, um, just, I should have two screens now, one with an iPad. Uh, oh, join meeting, I gotta click join meeting. That's just waiting. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, uh, so I, uh, Sam, just write a number. Um, let's say uh, you said you wanted to go from a bit pattern to a hexadecimal number. Is there an easy way to do it or not? Yes. That's that's what you asked. Uh, yeah. Okay. From binary to hexadecimal. So, if there's like an right. easy way to memorize it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, there's a uh, there's an easy way 
And there is another way, which is not so easy, but it will actually make uh, make your intuition stronger. So we'll do it in both both ways, okay? So write a bi binary uh, pattern there, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, whatever it is, right? So just write a, a random sequence of ones and zeros. Yeah, in fact, you're doing it, the, it'll be easy this way, right? It'll be even easier that way because, you know, Sam is kind of anticipating what we're going to do, but uh, she's putting spaces in, right? Between 1100 zero, zero, and then space, right? Um, but technically speaking, from a computer's perspective, the spaces don't exist, yes? From a computer's perspective, do the spaces exist? So the spaces are there only for a human. Okay, so then. No, 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 you want so to, like, it's okay. Move it's okay. It or... it's a, don't, oh, okay. don't, don't, don't do that. That's, that's fine. It's, leave it like that because that's what we want to do. Right? It's, uh, Sam is kind of anticipating what we want to do. So that's what we want to do. And we're doing that for humans, not for the computer, right? Because the computer doesn't, cannot see the spaces. And it's very interesting, right? Because, um, uh, and, and the spaces are there. For, uh, even, you know, when, when I speak to you in English, right? When I speak of fluent, well, hey, John, what is your name? Right? Or, hey, how doing? How are you following? Right? So if you look at the waveform, uh, you cannot see where the spaces between words are. <laughs> yes? So if you look at the sound, it's all the same. The amount of energy is it's like that. So the spaces between words are not reflected when I speak to you. Uh, at, at least they're not distinguishable from spaces or interjections that happen within words. But yet we, st we still know when we hear another person, we still know where each word ends and where, where the next word begins. Even though, and the funny thing is, uh, what we found, this is one of my postdoc uh, research things that <clears throat> I did, was that we found that even young children, uh, children as young as nine, nine months of age, right, uh, who have, haven't got an extensive vocabulary, right, even they can tell when the spaces happen in, in, in influent speech, not in childlike speech, right, There's, uh, sometimes some mothers speak to children in different ways. Right, they were separating each word out and so on and so forth. But uh, you know, but we studied mothers who didn't do that, and uh, and still the children were able to tell, uh, you know, uh, words apart. And that's very interesting, isn't it? So and so there is a whole field of research that goes into how how are they able to do that? So and is, is, can you statistically say that's possible at all? Right? Is it, is it possible even statistically that it's possible? And in fact, yeah, there are lots of really sound statistical models that can explain this too. Uh, interesting, isn't it? This is all part of computer science, by the way. This is all part of computer science. Uh, and, uh, and you'll get to do all of this, right? And, and so here, so the spaces don't exist, uh, but we put them in because it's gonna make it easier for us. And the reason we put it in is because it makes it, we're gonna do the, the easy way of converting from binary to hexadecimal. This is the easy way, right? So the easy way is, uh, so uh, in fact, you know what? Uh, um, yeah, let's not put the spaces there uh, because I, I okay. want to put the spaces there eventually, but uh, there is something interesting that I wanted to uh, say that's important uh, if the spaces were not there. Yeah, thank you so much. Right, now uh, put in, put another one one there, put put another one there. Yeah, that's fine. another one. How many, how many digits do you have? You shouldn't have a multiple of um, four. I shouldn't have a multiple of four, okay. Oops. Yeah, okay. All right, now start from the right side, right? Uh, and I don't want to say uh, why we're starting from the right. Technically, we should start from the left, right? And so there is a whole discussion, right? Spanning several minutes in a previous week, right? So you can search, look it up if you want. Uh, so starting from the right, mark off with a comma uh, every four, right? Oh, with a comma, okay. Yeah. It's, uh, by the way, Sam should not be the only one who's doing this, okay? She is doing this uh, uh, they... uh, 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 out of kindness to us by kind of, you know, I'm going to do it so that the other students have, don't have to do it, right? And so that means that you guys should also be doing it, I think, right? So on your own pieces of paper, or I, it shouldn't be in your mind, okay? So you should be doing it on a piece of paper. Uh, and uh, thank you, Dwayne. I think he's gone to get a notebook and a, and a pencil, right? And Out of uh, curiosity, can any of you write on the screen besides me? Like, no, can, I you just, can you so. try? Oh, dang. All right. I, I, I can, so. but I'm not even on an iPad anyway, so. Yeah. Rip. Okay. I can, why don't you try and join from here? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so have, have we done that? Uh, so. Um, yeah, I separated them into com using commas, I think. Oops. Okay. All right. So now we see the last, uh, the, on the leftmost side, um, uh, there's two ones, right? And so it's not a multiple of four. So let's do our trick. And this is, this is the reason why I wanted to write all of it together. Uh -huh. Yeah, put two zeros in front of it. We don't change the value of the number, but we make it four digits. 
that now is, is is that okay right now that is a number that's got a multiple of four digits right and we didn't change its value because we just took, stuck zeros in the front yes i don't know nobody's, nobody's yes responding. okay all right Right. Uh, yeah. I also say, yeah, speak up. Okay. And thank you, Sam. Right. She was the only one who spoke up, but you know, all, of you, all of you should speak up. Um, um, Professor, just a heads up. I do use they, them pronouns. Mm -hmm. I do use they, them pronouns, but. They, 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 yeah. they, they. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Th th thank you, Sam. All right. Um, so uh, I, um, so is everybody on board with this? I, I want to make sure. Okay. You have to speak up. And if uh, they, uh, yeah, I said they, so uh, oh, well, I'll say Sam, right? Uh, or they, they said, I, 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 you know, Ashwa, that doesn't cut it, okay? Because I can, I, when I'm in this mode, when, uh, yeah, when Sam's got like 70% of the screen, I can only see like uh, nine or 10 of you. So you got to speak up and say, yes, I got I to hear a resounding thing from you guys, okay? I'm, I shouldn't be the only one who's talking all the time. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. It's great. Yeah. Solid. Great. Okay, Sam. Uh, now you can go ahead. And and uh, what we'll do is now is is everybody happy that every chunk we have every chunk by chunk we mean that things between commas are uh, at the end. Okay. So the chunks have uh, all uh, four four bits long. Each each one of these is a bit, and it's four bits long. Yes or no? Yes. Now let's go and map those yep. four bits into their decimal numbers. Well, if we don't, we'll do it in multiple steps, but in your mind, you, you'll know that's what it is, okay? So uh, eventually you won't do it in all these different steps, okay? So on the left, on the rightmost side is 0, 0100. 0, 0. And we're doing so many different things here that this is really good. Um, 0, 0100, 0, 0. what is that in decimal, right? I'm not talking about hexadecimal, but what is that in decimal? 0, 0100. 0, 0. Four. 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 Four, yes? And why is it four? Because the second to left place is like the four. I don't know how to explain thank it. You. No, no, thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah. John, John, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that, that I think good. I have it. Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, from right to left, the bits are, I think, one, two, four, and eight, but only the four is on. Oh, uh, you mean from uh, so from right to left? Yeah, that's what you mean, from right to left. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, was well, so one, two, four, and eight. Yes, thank, thank you, Dwayne. That that was in fact the, uh, the the reason. Okay, so that's what we're going for, um, and and the reason it's one, two, four, and eight is really, if you think about it, they're just powers of two, aren't they? Right, two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, and two to the three. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So write any on the right side. Write some random uh, two ten uh, base ten number. Right. Write your you know like uh, some some random four uh, three digit number. Right. Three digit number. No, not 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 that uh, binary. Just a decimal number. Wait, a random base ten. Oh, oh sorry. Any, any anything. Right. So yeah, any, anything. Uh, but bigger than that, okay. <laughs> bigger than that? Yeah, bigger than that. <laughs> Three or four digits, okay. All right, okay. All right, three digits. Now think about that, okay? Well, actually, right, one more digit, Sam. Okay, so 8320. So look at that and, and think about what we're doing in decimal. Right? And I think this is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the suggestion that I uh, repeat every single quarter is that anytime you're stuck with what to do in binary, just think back to what you would do in decimal and you do exactly the same thing. And it just works like you know magic. So here is the rightmost digit is is the zeroth power of ten. Ten to the zero. Okay. And the next to it is instead of instead of going one, two, four, and eight, you're going zero, ten, one hundred, and thousand. That's ten to the zero, ten to the one, ten to the two, ten to the three. Yes or no? Yes. All right. Yes. Now, now that's in fact even book the intuition. Uh, uh, for going to any any base, right? It doesn't have to be base 10. It doesn't have to be base two, a binary. It can be base 27. It could be base 256, which is that one entire byte. Remember, right? Last class, we were looking at that entire byte and looking at that as one digit, one digit in a base 256 universe, where each person in that universe had 256 digits, 
256 numbers, uh, hand, uh, fingers, right? So like 128 on each hand, right? Centipede land, right? Centipede land, they have lots and lots of fingers. And you ask them what the number system is, and they say, oh, our number system is uh, uh, bytes, uh, bytes, byte number system, right? So because we have 256 digits, right? And each digit would have a different shape. Just like we have zero through nine, they have 256 different shapes, right? And the first shape looks like zero, 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 all zeros. The second shape looks like all zeros, except the last thing is a one. Does that make sense? So now yes. yeah. you are immensely powerful in, in that you know, base universe, because now you know the, the heart of it is really just you know going back to that place value system and we're saying <clears throat> all i want to do is you know if i this, that's what i've been doing since i was a kid in kindergarten right uh, in, ma in 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 my math classes when i add numbers and subtract numbers uh, i'll bring exactly the same thing to bear when i'm in binary land i'm going to do exactly the same thing except that everything is done to powers of 2 right my borrows and carries, right? When when I borrow uh, and carry in, in, in my decimal arithmetic problems, I'm borrowing tens, hundreds, thousands, yes? When you take yeah. one. However, when you borrow in here, you're still going to do borrow one zero, one zero zero, one zero zero zero, right? But they're not 10, 100, and 1,000. They're going to be two, right? Four, eight, and so on. Right, so when, when you borrow, you're not buying, borrowing tens, hundreds, and thousands, you're borrowing twos, fours, and eights. However, you don't have to think about you know, that and say, oh my gosh, that's so complex. How am I ever gonna do that, right? Because I can see Dwayne is starting to get worried, right? It's, 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 you know, like that, but you don't have to be worried because um, uh, that's, it doesn't happen like that, right? Uh, what we do is we can do that, in fact, we can do, binary addition and subtraction too. And you'll see, you don't have to remember that, oh, I'm gonna do uh, carry over two and so on. No, 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 you just carry over one, right? You carry over one, carry over, you know, one zero and so on. You do everything exactly the same way as you would do it in binary, in, in decimal, right? And it'll work, it'll just work. And then you'll see, right? And that's how we build the intuition for how um, information is stored, right? Information is stored in, in these peaks, peaks and valleys, not in, in the flatness. Right? Because if it's flat, there's no information, right? But uh, uh, that's why when you go to 2C, right? And uh, there's actually a very interesting question I asked in one of the quests, but they do splay trees, right? So they, they, people usually say, you know, I want to use binary trees because it gets me very fast. Well, let's, we won't talk about that, okay? Uh, Sam, Sam, especially Sam holding up Sam and they've been kind enough to volunteer. All right, so let's convert that. Uh, that's four, all right, do the, do the next one, do the next one. And yeah, it shouldn't be Sam. I'm sorry, it shouldn't be Sam. And I, I don't think it should be Dwayne, okay? Uh, and someone else, okay? Someone else uh, tell Sam what the next one should be. Yeah? This one, the next nine. one should be nine. Should be nine. Nine, nine, nine. Who said nine? Who said nine? Was it Brian? It was me, Ashwa. Ashwa, nine. Okay, There's great. A bunch of people. Yeah, uh, yeah all right. I, I next also next said one. nine. Next, next oh, one. I mean, you want me to explain how it's uh, uh, you can if you want. You can if you want. Um, actually, let's let's do it. I'm pretty sure you understand it, right? But and I'm pretty sure most of people understand. It. But you should go ahead and explain. Okay. Yeah. So the first one on the far right is worth the one, and then the next two are zero, and then the one on the the one on the left um, is worth eight. So eight plus one, and you get nine. Everybody okay with that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. yeah. Thanks. Um, that's that's great. Do the rest. Someone else. Not Ashwath. Not Dwayne. Not not Sam. Um, I could do it. Five. Sean, Five. Right? And you included that too, right? It's mm -hmm. In fact, you know, let's do what uh, uh, Ashwath did. Okay. When you say five, um, let's just say it's five because it's one plus four. Okay. And okay. Right. So so that's what Sean said. All right, someone do the next one, and then we've got one more. Okay. Three next one. Mm -hmm. What is that? Two. Um, so it's just two. All right, I can two. see it. I can see it. I can see it. The, the last one's three. Hey, you know, it's, it's kind of boring uh, because they're all decimal. Um, what we want is a number that goes over 10. Mm. All right, write down this bit pattern. 
um, you copy the same thing over, um, except um, turn a couple of those uh, zeros into ones, right? Uh, in, in, on the leftmost side, right? Yeah, zero, zero, one, one, and then a zero, they, they are, a couple of them, not all of them, and, and turn a couple of them into uh, zero to one, but not the ones on the, not the ones that have low power, right? It's more significant on the left. Why can't I log into my Zoom uh, on my... Shoot, how did I map these? One, two, nope. I'm not, I'm not being able to... Well, maybe I'm not even logged into Zoom at all. Okay. Are you done? I think no, so. Okay. I changed no, some no, of no, them. Let's do the same thing. Um, but yeah, and some of them are the same. So you can do, but the yeah. ones that are different, someone else can take crack. Okay. Maybe Ali and Kai who haven't had a chance. Peter, who hasn't been on screen, could also say this is what this one is. Okay. So um, yeah, unfortunately, I can't see all of you. Okay. Yeah, I, sure. I can't see a bunch of you. Um, oh, and June is in class too. Uh, June or Juan, who, how do you pronounce your name? Uh, my name's uh, is Juan Wu. John or June? Um, sorry. Uh, June, June. I'll just say June. That's what yeah, you could. You, you could just call me Joy. It doesn't That's matter what you want to ask. Uh, ask me. You know, say I can pronounce. I can practice. You know, it's it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah. So, Thank you. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah. Welcome to class. This is your first one, right? Juan. Uh, yeah, Juan. Juan. This is your yeah, first, uh, first class. You, you, yes. Because I remember sending you an ad code. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you're on a in class today because um, uh, I think uh, you went ahead and finished uh, all of the, uh, the first five quests, yes? Yeah. All right. so, uh, so we have some people in class who actually entered uh, in, on the waiting list who uh, got into class uh, after solving quests. So uh, there are people that can help, okay? So starting next week, when you're starting to quest, um, don't look up past subreddit solutions, please. Okay, because every single quest has a solution, right? And, uh, and you're doing yourself no favors by looking at a, a past tip sheet or uh, asking someone who's already done it. And that's a total waste of time. So um, it, you're better off asking one of your classmates on the subreddit. And, and, and that classmate is also better off helping you and getting participation points. And you both get participation points, but uh, much better because that way learning can happen, right? Um, it, I think maybe I should just, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at the past posts. Now don't look at subreddits. Don't look at Stack Overflow. And many of the problems that are there, <clears throat> you can also look in Stack Overflow and you can just do a Google search and you can find solutions, right? Um, mm -hmm. And, um, and um, that's a risk in all courses. All right, everything you teach, if you whether you want to learn or not, is the difference. If you want to learn, you'll find the answer yourself, uh, not look it up. Yeah, and, and I think uh, please don't look at. Ask ask uh, the people that have already done it, like uh, June, and, and 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 they will absolutely be happy to help. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Please help other people. Okay. I don't want it to be silent. Last uh, quarter was. Um, uh, no, last quarter 2A was great. 2A was great, but 2B, uh, a lot of students were in 2B last quarter who had absolutely no, uh, no, um, who, who uh, there, there are a lot of students who entered into uh, entered 2B because of uh, gracious grading the quarter before in 2A because of COVID. Because of COVID, a lot of instructors were uh, overkind and, and gave people uh, pass marks for effort rather than for knowledge. And uh, that kind of interfered very badly with 2D. A lot of students were, uh, and, and and but the thing is, uh, there were a bunch of students who were helpful too, and and uh, who were who didn't know how to do these things, and they were able to help, but nobody asked them. Nobody asked them because um, everybody was you did, uh, was scared to ask. Uh, I didn't even have the 2A background. I didn't know about these things that you're learning now, and they were in 2B. Um, and, and so they, they couldn't ask questions and it was dead. Uh, so please don't do it that way, right? It's really hard for me uh, when it comes to grading time, it's harder because uh, I can tell you right now, right? My goal is not to make as many of you fail as possible, okay? Uh, my goal is to make as many of you pass and not just pass, okay? This, I, that is not my goal. 
Okay, <laughs> I'll take it back, right? Uh, I want to make as many of you uh, productive in C++, right? lovers of C++, or lovers of computer science, lovers of science, right, uh, as possible, because um, that is where all professors really get their work, right? Not, in, not with anything else. And um, so if that is the case, uh, I want to see all of you learning, right, and helping each other. Because when you're helping each other, um, then uh, professors can feel uh, relief, right? Because you know, if, if that is a way professors can basically take a mental vacation, uh, is to say, okay, well, you know, now I'm I can happily devote my you know hours to some you know music you want to listen because listen to because you know the students are helping each other, right? Rather than okay, now the professor is not looking, I can go go away and do something else, right? That is uh, then you know teachers can't take time off, right? They got to be on your back all the time, cracking wood. So that's the best way you can get me off your back is to just talk, talking to each other in the forums and not on Discord and Slack, okay? So you can say, you know, you're helping each other, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I, I don't have enough time to be monitoring like 15 different forums at the same time. So I say, all right, let's just do one public forum, Reddit. Everybody likes that. Lots of colleges use that too. Uh, and it's easy, right? Easy and it's also open uh, and, and that's it. And so we're going to do that. And I look at it and, and I'll give you points. And I don't want to make it, you know, Canvas discussions. In the pre in previous quarters, I had all my discussions happen on Canvas. And it was, and many of the discussions were all even private. And I, I thought, you know, private discussions don't do anyone any, any good, right? I don't even know if that person actually understood it in the first place because they were after the answer maybe, right? Um, so, and it's, it happened one time and it could just vaporize after that. And, and so, and, and, and then even Canvas discussions, right? And, and sometimes in Canvas discussions, what I found was um, two years ago, uh, some of the students were saying incredibly beautiful things, right? Uh, so, some really profound things that I've only seen from you know, grad students before. Uh, and, and they were making these observations. Uh, and I thought, um, well, you know, <laughs> so, uh, this is gonna be gone. In three months, that is gone. Nobody's ever gonna see it anymore, right? I'll probably be able to retrieve that Canvas package in an archive, right, in maybe 10 years and say, wow, you know what? Sean made this incredible observation back in 2022, right? And, um, and that's gone. And uh, how could this benefit you? And so there's uh, even less of a, of a motivation for you to uh, comment in, in, in a closed forum like that in Canvas, which you know, it's very you know, fleeting value. So that's why it's on Reddit now. So, and because students have so many valuable things to say, right? Many times, many times students say more profound, useful and interesting things, right? Uh, than professors because they can look at the problem in in directions that the professor does not have to look at or does not uh, does not uh, is not able to look at maybe maybe because it's such a long time since they've been a student right maybe they've even forgotten that perspective exists so those are things that value that students bring in and because and sometimes that perspective uh, shift uh, is also responsible for an entirely new theory right that people seasoned uh, seasoned uh, scientists who've been looking at a problem for decades could not see it but a student can see it, right? How is that possible? Because that student had an extra data point. They, these people didn't have. These people were looking at the same thing over and over again, right? So you think about what Einstein said, right? You can't do a, an experiment that's gone wrong. You can't do it like a million times, hoping that it's gonna be right one time, right? And so, so, so stupid people will always do the same thing again and again, hoping it'll work, right? But you know, what we do is look at it and say, why did it not work? Let me try and see why it not didn't work. And let me try and make it work next time, right? That's what we do as humans, right? And, um, and so, and so that's, that's, that's the heart of science, right? Repeatability, predictability, so that we can, we as humans don't have to waste our precious bandwidth, right? We can spend it being humans and not automata. And say, we can use machines to do what things that can be predicted, right? And, and as humans, we can just sit around and enjoy. And uh, that's where we're going, right? With, uh, with all the technology and advancement we're doing, uh, advancements we're making, uh, our ultimate game uh, and aim is to make everything predictable and, um, and automatic, right? So we don't have to do any more work than absolutely necessary to just sit around and, you know. All right, so, <laughs> uh, so let's go around and convert the rest of them too. I'm so sorry, nobody, nobody interrupted, okay? So I, I have to say, I have this, now, right now is an opportunity. I have this propensity to just go off in, in, on these tangents and start talking, right? And you guys have to help me here by, you know, interrupting me and drawing me back, okay? And Sam is patiently waiting for me to come back to topic, 
right? And 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 resume. And and they've been sitting there for I don't know how long, Sam. <laughs> right. So uh, <laughs> you should just say, it's, it's time. You should feel free to say, right? Hey, say, Prof, can we go ahead? Okay. You've been waiting there with your, your with your, you know, and writing. So it's just, go ahead, go ahead. Why is nobody uh, speaking up? Okay. Why why am I the only person who was talking? I got you from now on. I'll do it. Thank, thank you, Dwayne. Okay. All right. So I don't want Dwayne to be the only one. Okay. So then he's also burdened and, you know, and he's got to be looking out for this too. Right. I want all of you. I want all of you to say, feel utterly comfortable to just interrupt me. Someone take, no, no, this is your practice. Okay. I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be talking someone other than. Excuse me, professor. <laughs> Peter, thank you. All right. And I, I love it because you're not on, on camera. Better. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think I can actually write on the screen. Uh, hey, cool. All right. Can go you, ahead, go ahead, can you see this here? Uh, yeah, totally I can see, see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I'm going to try and write too. I'm going to try. I'm going to hang on. Yeah, okay. y'all yeah, should be able to annotate in. if I'm remembering I correctly. I just figured out how to <laughs> use that. Okay, okay, okay. At the very gonna, top, uh, a few options. How do you do it? It's yeah, at that's the crazy. What? like the very top of the screen, like the part where you like drag the screen around with. It, there's a bit that says view options, and there should be one that just says annotate. Um, the whole gang is here. Why is why is it not? Um, I used to do that before. You know, I used to do it in a previous class, and I'm, it's not letting me join the meeting this time. This is waiting and waiting and waiting with that spinning wheel. Um, and there, I don't want to waste time on this. Okay, yeah, go ahead. At least two of you can write. Okay, so yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, anybody who can get in can write. Uh, Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, and then uh, you want to go from uh, you know uh, what's what's the other one? Yeah. Everybody understand. So why is it fifteen? By the way, right? Peter can also say why that is fifteen. Okay. Uh, hey, Peter, oh, yeah. only one, only one. Okay, you know, you're doing all three. No, 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 rub off the 11 and 30. Rub off the other two. Uh, I think the other two were Kai. Oh, that wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, because oh, it's all red ink, right? So someone else can do the 11 and 13. Uh, Peter, uh, you can say what 15 is, right? Or whatever you wrote, you can say why that is so. so really quickly, I just mean, add up the three, three numbers. So A plus B to C, that's why it is, right? Yep, just eight to four to two to one. Hey, everybody okay with that? Yep. Great. Okay. Dwayne's yeah. got two hands up in the air. That's great. Okay. Now, <laughs> all right. Okay. So uh, 13, who did 13? Um, I, I did. This one is just eight Five? plus okay. four plus one. Great. Great. Thank you. 11? Kai, thank you, Kai. Oh, I actually did two. That one's just eight plus two plus one. Oh, Kai, you did both? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's fine. Okay. Henceforth, uh, only one chance every each one. Okay. okay. Uh, including me, I think. Right. If I, even if I do one of those, I'll only take one. Uh, everybody okay with this so far? Okay. Now uh, the challenge that you know, we come to the question that Sam ultimately uh, was after was uh, how uh, do we convert that from hexadecimal to you know decimal to hexadecimal? This is one way, right? Now we have the hexadecimal. Essentially, we have hexadecimal. So, so thirteen, which we write in decimal. Really, you can think of, we bring the three and the one together, right? It looks like B, right? Yes, we try and do this with car number and license plates, right? So we could try and pronounce them. So one, so hexadecimal, we say, all right, we need 16 digits, right? In our, on our planet, we have beings that have eight fingers on each hand with 16 digits, right? So I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And then eight, nine, 10, right? Like that. But I need, you know, eight, nine, uh, and then uh, I, I need to have uh, a different symbol, right? Nine, I can't have zero again, right? I, I can't, one, zero is two symbols. So I need one symbol. So what can I do? I can create my own symbol. I can say a star is now my, star is 10 in base 16, right? Maybe triangle, 11. That's kind of hard, isn't it? Plus on a keyboard, it's gonna be hard. So I wanna say, you know, on a keyboard, I wanna be, want be easy and intuitive and everything. So I'll just say, let me use A, B, C, D, E, F as my 10, 11, 13, 14, 15 in hexadecimal. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so I have 16 digits in hexadecimal. They go from zero through F. I have 10 digits in decimal. They go from zero through to nine. How, I have how many digits in octal? Right, not Sean, okay? Was it wasn't Sean who, was, uh, who th th had a question about octal last class. I think it was Sean. Yeah, yeah, okay. So not Sean, right? Someone else. How many digits in octal? Well, there's technically 18, right? Because counting, it's 17. It's one through 17 and then zero. No, 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 octal, not 18. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, which one is 18? I'm sorry. Uh, who said that, by the way? I did. I thought it was 18. 
which which or one like is i know there's well i thought like total numbers because it's like zero through 17 right oh are you i'm, I'm sorry ali i i'm totally lost are you answering the question how many digits in the octal uh, what is the maximum oct octal digit I guess no. I think yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's fine. Uh, so Ali is probably it's a common mistake. Uh, it's octal means base eight. Okay, I don't know why we call it octal. Right, octal looks like an October and big number. Octal is base eight, which means the only so we only have eight digits, right? So they go from zero through to seven. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's octal. Octal is eight. Yeah. I, it sounds, yeah, thank, thank you, Ali, for bringing that up, okay? Because I, I think it's a common source of confusion. Octal is just base eight. I wonder why I didn't make that clear on the you know, module, um, because it does sound like it's a big number. Yes? Yeah, yeah octal is it. base eight. Um, base eight, so we only have seven, right? Suppose someone said, I, wanna, uh, I, want, uh, I want a number in base 27. Right? How many? How many? How many possible digits do they have in their universe? Right? Base twenty-seven. I don't know if they could be beings, really. Really, this is an even odd number of fingers. You can't split them up symmetrically. Right? Maybe they don't have mirrors in their country, right? Or in their planet. So yeah, to auto uh, to base twenty-seven. Then you have twenty-seven digits. Space that is your zero. A B C D E F. Each one of those is a digit in our base twenty-seven land. Right? Z is our last digit. And its value is 26. Yes or no? No, no feedback from you guys. Yeah. So just to mm -hmm. clarify, mm -hmm. it would because you count the zero, so you don't go all the way up to 27. You just go up to 26, so you're counting the number of digits. It's 27. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. What, was it Sam? He said uh, yeah. I can't see you for some reason. Oh, because you um, have the iPad. Because my video's off for ease of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's fine. Um. Um. So does everybody understand that? So in any base, if I say base two, you don't have the two anymore. You only have two digits, zero and one. You don't have two. Base four, zero, one, two, three, you don't have four. So base 16, you don't have 16. You only have up to 15. And you only have, you need, so which means you, you only have up, up to 15. You only need 15 different symbols. You don't need 16 symbols. And your 15 symbols are zero through F. Yes? Yes. Great, thank sure. you. Uh, Sean, you can speak up too, right? You can speak up because, you know, even thumbs up, I, I fail to see sometimes. Uh, okay. So, uh, so uh, is everybody, so is base 256, base 256. And technically, you can have any number of base, right? Any any base, you can have uh, any number of, right? So all of that is possible. Um, so base 256, how many digits are there? 256 digits, the biggest number, 255, zero through to 255. Yes? Yeah. We're covering a lot yes. of ground, right? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, even though it looks like we're not covering a lot of ground, we are actually covering a, a tremendous amount of ground today, right? Because we're talking about numbers at a, such a deep level, right? How, what, what actually makes them up and the bytes and the bits and how you can count and so on. This is going to make a really solid foundation, right? Because when you read module zero after this, it will all just, just latch onto the right places, right? Essentially, that's what it is, right? When we read a book, there's a lot of information in the book. It's a question of whether they latch onto the right places in our minds. Yeah, okay. So what is 11 in base 16, right? Be hexadecimal, what is 11 in base 16? We know that, you know, 10 is not one zero because we want to use a single symbol. So we say A, yeah, A is 10. So what B. is 11? B. B. B, yeah, A, B, C, D, E, F. So who said B? Someone said B, not me. Sean, okay, no, no, no thumbs, no, no palms, okay? You got to say me, right? me with Sean, okay. Okay. okay? You got to say right. me with Sean, okay? All right, good, good, um, thank you. Um, great, thank you. Um, is, is everybody okay with that? B, all right? And, and the rightmost digit is four, because, you know, for hexadecimal four is the same, we're using the same, borrowing the same symbol, as four. all right? So uh, not Sean, not, uh, you know, Sam, uh, Ali. Jennifer has been very quiet today, right? Then maybe Jennifer, what is 13? What is 13? I don't want to put you on the spot, okay? I can ask someone else too. Someone else can also volunteer. Uh, if, if, but 13, basically all you have to do is start from 10, which is A, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A, B, C, D, E, F. Yes, so you know what 13 is. D. Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. Jen, Jen, Jennifer, you good, good with that? D? 
I can't hear you. By the way, you you muted. Yeah. Oh, all of you can un unmute yourself. Oh, that's why you can. I can hear you. Oh, un unmute. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think the last class we established that we don't have a feedback problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of you can unmute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sean. That's why you were you know restricted to gestures mm -hmm. before, so you can basically speak up and. Uh, okay. Keenan, yeah, yeah, Keenan. Yeah, Keenan yeah, was the person who asked the question last class. Yeah, I, I, I forgot. I thought your name began with N. Yeah, Keenan. Yeah. And, and we also did the conversion of KE from base 27. I remember that. Okay, all right, good. D, and then the three, well, we have 15. We have 15. What is 15? No, not Jennifer. Okay, someone else. What is 15? F. <laughs> all right, F. And, uh, and so uh, 15, F will be what? It's, all right, and, and then we have three, which is three. Yeah, we don't have a separate symbol for three. So that is our hexadecimal equivalent of that binary number, right? We went through multiple steps to get there, but is, is that clear, right? And, and, uh, and uh, uh, but the thing is, we didn't go to, into the motivation for why we do that, right? Why does actually, why does, why does this process work? Why does this uh, process actually work? Um, so, uh, you know, um, why, if, suppose I wanted to convert from base like this into base 27, does it still work? Can I mark off four spaces or, or base 27? Can I do this in base 27? It's a very good question. I'm not going to answer this, by the way, right? Uh, maybe, you know, Sam or someone else who's actually working on this right now, maybe they already know the answer. Uh, it's a fantastic, great opportunity for you to discuss this uh, in the forums, saying we did this in class, right? Converting a binary number into base 16, that is hexadecimal like this. Will the exact same strategy work with base 27? Assuming that we don't have to mark off every four, base 27, different number of bits. Yes, it's not every four. Base two, yeah, base you know, eight, three bits at a time. You're gonna mark off three at a time, right? Base eight, you remember three at a time, yes or no? Yes. Base three at a time, because you know, two yep. to the three is zero. Three bits go all the way from one, zero, zero, zero to one, 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 and one, one, one is seven. One plus two plus four is seven. So three bits go seven, right? So this base, if you, base eight, that's octal, right? The octal, the word that confused Ali, the octal is, you know, if you want to do octal conversion, all you need to do is take the bit string and mark it off in chunks of three. Mm -hmm. You want to do, you know, uh, hexadecimal conversion, mark it off in chunks of four. Now the question to discuss in the forums, you, you cannot look up Stack Overflow anywhere. Like nobody has been, no, I, I bet you cannot find the lecture or anybody talking about this. This is why this is gonna be such a fantastic topic for you guys. There don't even have to be a red discussion, right? Two of you, right? Three of you can basically plan out a short sketch, right? Just sitting in a room with a camera, right? And discussing this issue, right? We did this in class. Uh, does this also work in base 27, right? The same way of marking off bits and converting, right? Why does it not work in base 27? And have a really quick in, in, in discussion. Record it. Hey, edit out. Right, ninety percent of the conversation we're going to edit out. But some salient bits, just fuse it together in, in an iMovie or something, and post it on YouTube. And you get like tremendous extra credit for it if you do something like that. Right, just small talk show. Right, maybe you say you know it's, it's you know I don't know two of you guys get together and then like, Joe and a Kai talk show or something like that. Right, you just get together, use a foothill. You know, foothill has beautifully uh, decorated rooms. Right, yeah, yeah, for students to use. Uh, so uh, glass walls and things like that. Uh, so you take one of those room, rooms you want, turn that into a, a, you know, a place where you're gonna shoot your talk show and have these interesting technical discussions. And they could just be five minute, five minute, five minute bullets. Like, you know, not like TikTok, right? But the five minute useful shots, uh, shorts, the technical shorts, uh, just featuring interesting discussions between intelligent people about some technical concept, right? And it should be self-contained. You shouldn't refer to my lecture deeply. You should say, you know, in our lecture today, we talked about, you know, converting from one base to another, and we did this. This is also working in something else. Maybe you have some interesting point, right? Maybe two of two or three of you talk about it, or maybe even a bunch of you talk about it, and you know, talk about it half an hour. And maybe no interesting thing emerges from that discussion. That's fine, okay? But that means you don't have something for a talk show that day. That's all. And you know, you may think, oh, it's not working. But if you go to Hollywood, uh, that's what happens, right? Many times you see all these sitcoms on TV, right? And when I used to watch these sitcoms, um, I used to say, well, you know, it's only 15 minutes long. It shouldn't take a lot, long, long time to produce. No, these, they're only 15 minutes long, but you know, the, the, the writers get together in a room, like there's 15 or 20 people sitting around the table. They're just generating ideas, tossing things around. And hey, that's really cool. I'm gonna, you know, write it in, write it in, write it in. And they generate like uh, hundreds of hours of these ideas and take the best ideas and then weave them together into a story. 
right? And so, you know, many hours go into the production of a 15 hour sitcom. And uh, like that, and so many meetings, sometimes they get together for a meeting and nothing happens. They generate lots and lots of ideas, but nothing really cohesively forms a storyline. So I say, okay, well, today we had a discussion, but no, no story came out of it. No, no episode, right? So like that, you guys can get together, talk about technical stuff. Maybe at the end of the day, nothing happens, right? And you say, well, you know, no show today. We'll just go have a beer or something like that, right? So you go away. Uh, maybe you do that many times. Sometimes, all of a sudden, someone just says a really brilliant uh, thing, right? I say, That's really cool. Today, we got our first episode done, right? So you just make a talk show. And you don't know, it doesn't have to be the same host, right? Maybe you're a bunch of people and you choose different hosts each time, right? And this is, everything is, see, these days, everything is so decentralized, democratized. You don't have to be a big shot person in Hollywood producing these videos, right? You, the five or 10 of you can get together, produce a yes, kick-ass video, right? Which uh, import, imparts uh, really valuable knowledge in a, in a, in a way that uh, can reach students that us professors cannot. Because students listen to other students in different ways than students listen to professors. Right? It doesn't matter. You know, I could be wearing a hat and you know, like, I mean, dressed up like you, and, you know, right. genetic alteration. Even then, you know, the years of uh, teaching students make me, make me behave differently among students, right? So uh, sometimes I anticipate what students think and that anticipation could be something some completely wrong. Whereas another student who is in the same shoes, they would be able to relate much better to you and they may offer you a much better explanation than the professor. And, and those are the things that students look for. So that's why even if I have like a trillion videos on YouTube, right? Um, but if, uh, if uh, someone goes and searches and, and they find a talk show run by students, right? Talking about things, they are more likely, I think, to click on that um, uh, because they would see people talking about issues that in, in a way that relates to them. I think, I don't know, the, again, you know, I can be completely wrong, right? So I can be wrong uh, and, and you can prove me right or wrong. Um, I'm, yeah, all right. So is everybody okay with this? This is one of the ways we convert. And I've also given you a really nice and juicy topic that you can talk about in the forums. And it doesn't have to be the forums. It can be a YouTube video, right? And we'll publish it on non nonlinear uh, we'll just put it on the nonlinear channel, right? Just, well, I have a lot of junk there, right? Everything I shoot these days is just dump it there, right? I just categorize them in playlists for you guys in a two-way. You go to two-way, you can see all the two-way lectures. But uh, yeah, we'll just dump everything there. We don't care. Right, the machine is going to do the sorting and and, and categorizing and ranking and everything is being done automatically. So we don't care. You just throw everything at it. Uh, you don't care, and uh, you don't have to be worried too, because everybody has junk these days, right? Everybody has junk online, so you don't have to be worried that I'm going to you know make a fool of myself by making a video. And nobody's going to, especially the students, right? And people say, you know, oh, that person, this is, this is stupid things as a student, right? You know, I'm pretty sure you can go and find you know silly videos of Obama. Right, the yeah, University of Hawaii, maybe they shot a video and they, they posted that too, right? As students, they're having fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can find you can find videos of famous people doing silly things. And uh, so perfectly fine, especially when you're a student, right? This is your chance, go ahead and do all that. So that these will become valuable bloopers in the future, right? <laughs> valuable bloopers that you can say, hey, you know, yeah, all these cool. All right, so is everybody okay with this so far? I, I think we did actually cover a lot of ground. Oh, actually we ran to the end of time. Um, and I am disappointed, by the way, I am disappointed because other than a select few of you, uh, many of you chose to stay silent, okay? Um, and well, you know, Jennifer spoke up after I spoke to her, um, but that's not enough, okay? Um, all of you just feel free, naturally, right? If this was a party, right? If this was a party and we're all in a party, you know, it's not all of you sitting around one person listening, listening to, the, to them talk. It's like the worst party you can ever go to, right? So <laughs> you wanna be there where everybody's talking and having fun and, you know, chit chatting. And so you should get to that level of comfort, okay? So I am, I can tell you, even if you say stupid things here, I am not going to mark you down, okay? Like, if you say incorrect things, that's fine. I say incorrect things, right? <laughs> and um, and uh, marking me down for saying incorrect things is saying, well, you know, I got to curate all of my YouTube videos, right? Make sure that everything I say is right before I post them. No, no, I just say, no, it doesn't matter. If I say wrong things, I say wrong things. I'm going to put it out there anyway. So, uh, so that is how I, you can say that is my, you know, you can say the same thing for yourself too. So you don't have to worry uh, and just say whatever you want uh, because that's what I think is valuable. That's the, the valuable image to a, an employer is that you're willing to put yourself out there. Not because employers want to employ people willing to take risks and people who put themselves out there are taking their risk. 
right? Not so if I hire someone who's not willing to take risks, I gotta it's it's a lot of work for me as a manager. Yeah. Because you can always hire people who are not willing to take risks. And then you can treat them as automata, meaning that you have to spell out all the fine details of their work. You gotta say you do this and do this and do this and everything, you gotta spell it out. Because um, they're not willing to take risks, they can do things on their own. And, and everything they gotta come and check with you. And this means more work for the manager, which means that you know the structure is different. Um, but that's not what professors want from students too, right? So uh, we want everybody to be comfortable and doing their own thing. And um, so I, I don't know how we got started talking about that, but uh, essentially you should, uh, this should just be a group conversation. And group, so any, I think maybe we're just getting warmed up, okay? Maybe the first couple of classes, we're just getting to know each other. Uh, but eventually um, I hope I won't have to talk. Uh, I won't have to talk. Uh, by the way, um, I, let me, Maximize the and uh, you know I can't read what Sam is typing. Who's, who's typing in black ink? By the who's writing in black ink? Oh shoot! I sorry. I thought these were my own notes for a second. I forgot. Uh, I, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I didn't know they were uh, basically. You know, just then, yeah. Uh, actually, no. I don't, don't rub it off. Why are, why are you rubbing it off? Oh, I thought you said you couldn't read it. I was going to no, no, rewrite it. No, I couldn't it. read it because your uh, the screen was shrunk to a stamp size. Oh. Okay. Now, now, now oh, I've yeah. got it. Now, now I've increased the size, and I can read. It would be different depending on base. <laughs> yeah, I, I can read it. Yeah. Um, okay. So you know, uh, henceforth, if you can get a screen like uh, Sam just did, uh, it'll actually be cool if we all just choose different colors, and, and then just coordinate like that, so we don't have to say, "Hey, this is Peter waiting." I, you know, and and each one can basically scribble. Uh, although, you know, I, I suspect this is probably the last time we'll, I use an iPad like this. Uh, next class on, uh, we should be using um, some online compiling environment, which lets us write and run C++ program. Um, maybe we'll use Ripple, Ripple.it, Ripplete. I, I, I used to call it Ripplete. Some people call it Ripple. Uh, so, um, or collaborative event. So many sites online. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, what is it? GCC.org or something like that. So uh, the students found uh, the last quarter. Students found a whole bunch of sites. So we'll pick up one of those. All of us can code on the same file at the same time, right? Uh, and then we'll walk through some code and we'll try and play this game. That, uh, or if you if you can come up with other ideas for what we can do next class, what we can code, it has to be something simple, okay? So we shouldn't say, all right, tomorrow we're going to start coding binary search. We start now, we'll end in six weeks, but along the way we code, learn all the concepts. No, that's not the right way to do things. Uh, well, let's start simple. Right, uh, so we shouldn't be implementing something complex. We'll just start with uh, calculating simple expressions, right? Calculating simple expressions using times, exponents, uh, adding, multiplying, using parentheses, uh, different different ways. Um, so it doesn't have to be age of thing, okay? That's one. If you don't have any other idea, you can say comment Noah uh, calculating age of phone, okay? And then you can call it, calculate age of phone and print it. Okay, maybe Ali says, no, I don't want to call, calculate the age of anything, but I really want to take that number and calculate uh, pi to the power of that number or pi divided by the number, you know, or, or you know, something like that, some, or whatever. You, you can calculate whatever you want. I mean, it just has to be some expression. And, uh, you know, things. Um, but you say that in the comment so that someone who's following the video can look at the comment and say, oh, wow, okay, that's what um, Ali did. Oh, that's what they blame the guy. Okay, so they can look at the comment and then look at what you did and then try and make sense of it. So the goal here is that by the time they read that entire uh, program, looking at all of your comments, they have a really solid intuition about how to use different kinds of expressions, right? They shouldn't all be the same expression. That's why I said, let's not all calculate the age, right? The age of things, right? So maybe one person says, um, I'm gonna interpret the number as the age of five different things, right? So that one person would say dog, iPhone, iPad, you know, some game, right? Pac-Man and so on, right? So, so something like that. So that one person does all of the ages. Another person says, well, I'm gonna use that number as something else, right? Um, I, I don't know, I, you know, I'm gonna see if that number is a leap year. I, no, 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 that's a lot of decisions. You just want uh, calculations, right? You just find something. Right. I want to find the way. I want to find the cost of uh, that many grams of gold today. Right. I just put it out of thin air. Right. So I'm sure there's like a hundred different ideas like that. Right. So we got calculating the age of things, finding the cost of gold, maybe um, uh, how long, who's the current uh, my, Michael Phelps, I'm oh, a swimmer. Right. I'm going to find out how, uh, uh, how long Michael Phelps will take to swim from uh, that many meters. Right. 
okay? Uh, using the published speed records or something like all kinds of crazy things, right? Maybe you're a car enthusiast, right? And you say, oh, this is how long the latest, uh, you know, Tesla would take to go from that zero to that many miles per hour, right? According to published speed, all of those interesting things you can say and you get one comment. Every student gets one comment, okay? So you get to put that comment and say what you're calculating underneath, you're gonna calculate that. That calculation should not involve anything complex, like if loops and things like that. It should be a simple calculation, right? You can use parentheses and times and power and things like that. It can be long, but it should be one calculation. Everybody okay with that so far? Yep. All right, yeah. good. Uh, yeah. I just heard one voice and, and uh, maybe it was Sam, right? Because that person wasn't on screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I want everybody to be on board. Um, <clears throat> I'm not seeing any activity in, in on the sub. Okay. So I've given you a lot of opportunity and chances and uh, and ideas to talk about. Convert your, convert your name to pronounceable hex or th those are things you can talk about in the forums and, and can pick up, pick on other people's uh, posts and say, hey, that's really interesting. Uh, and conversation. None, none of that is happening. But those are all you know things that count for your points, right? Do that. The other thing is this, right? Think about, you know, things that you want to come up with for next class on Tuesday when you're coding. What what is it that you want to calculate? Okay, everybody will get a chance. All of you, uh, do that. Uh, and the other is well, something that we talk about, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, conversion. Uh, and you can say, um, is there another way to convert from binary to hexadecimal? Right? Does this work from zero to uh, base twenty-seven or some other? Right? Does it work or not? Can we have a you know, discussion? And is, is is it interesting enough to turn into a five-minute uh, bullet, you know, a, a video bullet um, that can be shared. And, um, the, you know, it, all of those count for really super duper extra credit, right? And you can be sure that if you get extra credit here, <clears throat> um, it's not just extra credit for 2A, right? When you get extra credit from me, I think that that what you just said is going to be super valuable to you beyond 2A, right? I think that whatever you did is probably going to come back and benefit you in ways that you probably don't know now, right? So that's what extra credit means. Regular credit is for doing stuff that is important uh, for passing a class and getting a good grade, but extra credit from any professor, not just me, right? When, uh, when you get extra credit, it, so things like this get you tremendous extra credit, okay? So do it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, like I said, if your video is poor quality, that's okay. Lots of people have poor quality videos out there before they produce good quality videos. Yes, you've seen them, right? You see, you go to many of the YouTube stars and, and look at some of their historical blogs and say, and look at their own experience. You know, sometimes they write their experience out in, in, a, in a blog and say, you know, uh, initially I started out producing videos like this, it didn't work. Look at how horrible that was. Then I got some tips from this person. And then I got some tips from that person saying, hey, this is how, even though you got good videos, this is how you can get it in front of people that can appreciate it. I put all of this together. That's how I got to uh, 2.5 million views, right? And there are people that are you know, open and honest and willing to be able to discuss all these things, right? They don't say, you know, I'm hiding in a mansion in Texas between $5 million worth of lawyers and marketing agents who make sure that everything I produce is heard by trillions of people, right? No, so they are saying, this is how I made myself a hit, right? In the beginning, I was nobody. And uh, and slowly, and I listened to the advice of all these interesting and intelligent people who are themselves humble enough to say, this is how you make your mark, right? Not uh, making the mark and being secretive about it. I just listened to them and did exactly what they say. Uh, and, and then I made these things. And as evidence, go back and look at my video from five years ago, right? And look at the video now. And these are all the things that I've adopted from other people. And th those are things that made me successful. So those are all lessons, right? So you don't have to come to a college or university anymore to get a good education. Yeah, um, because these are useful lessons uh, on par with the high quality education you're getting at universities and colleges. Right? Because there are useful life lessons that teach you, you know, the humility and the value of sharing. And, and that's why I say it's okay. It's okay to go and, and, and it doesn't matter. Even if you're going to run for president uh, one day, uh, you know, we've had people who run for president with uh, absolutely shocking videos about themselves. Yes, um, totally shocking videos. And people would say, how, uh, how is it even possible that a person who was caught on video doing that could even imagine that one one day they could be, you know, the president of the world or universe or whatever, you know, that, but that happens. And so what that means is that um, people accept the fact that other people change. Even the person who did the stupid video 
uh, is okay with that because they say, well, you know, that was me 10 years ago. But if you're such a stupid person as to say that person 10 years ago is the same person as me today, then that's your, your loss, right? It's entirely possible that I could have changed in those 10 years. So that video is just me experimenting with life. My, what, if you want to know what I think about today, look at my video from yesterday or now. What am I saying now? Ask me a question and ask my, listen to my answer and see if it makes sense. Right? So uh, it's okay. It's okay to be wrong. Right? And I think that is the underlying message in this class all the way through. Right? It is for students. I don't know. I don't. So when this was not the case, when I was in school anyway, right? Uh, even in college, I think. Students were not afraid to be wrong. Right, when, even when teachers ask something, like, they just say, everybody, everybody's out there, everybody's listening. They just say wrong things, you know, and 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 they're they're okay to say be, be told, being told, no, that's not right. And uh, and at some way, some point along the way, that was lost, and, and I think students started getting more and more um, uh, reluctant to be wrong. That um, they're just silent, and and the danger of being silent. Is, is, is just not just that you won't get clarification for your issues and not get the valuable 50% of the knowledge that machine learning systems, right? Because if you take a machine learning system and only give it positive examples, I don't know, I don't know if people are, some of you may be machine learning people who just come to learn C++ or some of you have hopes of getting into machine learning eventually, right? But this is the way, right? If you take a machine learning system and only give it positive examples, it will never train itself. Right? Uh, it will take uh, maybe an un unduly horrendous amount of time to train itself. The best way to learn, to, to make a, a, a machine learning system learn is to give it both positive and negative examples. Maybe they're weighted differently, but they have to be given both positive and negative examples. Otherwise the system cannot learn to distinguish between true and false. Yes or no? This is something that everybody learns when you, as a data engineer, when you go into the field, it's the first thing we learn, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you guys, but this, this is what you learn, right? So you need to have both positive and negative examples. And uh, by being completely silent in class and not participative and not asking and not risking, not risking your neck, right? You should be okay with risking your neck. You're not gonna die by asking uh, a stupid question or, uh, or giving the wrong answer. I'm not gonna take a gun and you know, <laughs> you know, fire you through my Zoom window, right? So uh, none of that is gonna happen. What's, what's even keeping you, right? Uh, with, uh, so you should just feel free totally. In fact, if you're wrong, um, it sends a more positive uh, example, a positive uh, message to other students saying, well, that's a student that's open, right? So that's a student that is not uh, so concerned about their own image uh, that they're willing to take chances and listen to you, right? So you should just feel free to be wrong. Then that means that you, you care less about yourself and care more about other people, right? And people who are just always, you know, they may have other reasons, obviously, but, um, but as a student, the best way to learn is to get 100% of the examples, not just the 50% that are just positive examples, right? And by staying silent, you only get the positive examples. And by saying things that are wrong and being told, no, that's why it doesn't make sense. That's a very valuable negative example, right? And sometimes one negative example is enough. In a, in a machine learning system, one is enough um, if, to make up for many of these uh, you know, bad patches in the beta. So I, that's why I want to encourage this. Thank you so much, guys. All right, what time is it now? Uh, uh, it's 10 6. 10 6. Yeah, we're running past time every time and you're being very patient and uh, accommodating and staying on. So thank you all so much. Um, I, I won't see you guys until Tuesday. Um, so uh, have a great weekend, but you should not just party off, okay? Um, this is the first few weeks. Just keep that in mind. You can party party in week six, week seven, week eight. Those are good times to party. Okay. After your midterm, have a good party. Okay. Week one, week two, that is the bad time to party. And people say this is the best time to party because, you know, everybody's new and the first time they're making friends go around and get to know as many different people as possible. That is the worst possible time to get to know as many different people as possible because everybody has the least amount of time for you. Right. So that is the best time for you to spend time throwing through all the coursework so that after the midterm, you have lots and lots of time to party. In fact, you can throw the party and everybody can come and attend, right? But other people won't have time at that time. So now is the time to just, you know, hunker down, hunker down and, and get all this buttoned up solid, okay? And then you'll be really, really good students. Not just to me, anywhere you go.
you, that is the, that, I think that is the way in which you can make your own lives easier. And nobody told me that as a student. So I suffered. I suffered because I, I partied the first few weeks and then I had a lot of catching up, right? And I, I, I remember, right? So some days I went out without sleep, right? Uh, staying up all night and drinking coffee and tea. And um, I learned things the hard way, right? And saying that that's not the way to do things. And uh, because I ultimately, at the end of my graduation, the parties were not the things that I remembered, right? Because you have, you have so many of them eventually, right? You can't say that was valuable. And um, so, but lessons, they will be valuable forever and ever, right? So I think that's what you should do. So the first few weeks, you, I need you 100%, okay? Even if class runs over time, thank you so much, right? Um, this is the, the right thing to do. And, and then afterwards, it's okay. You know, students will start dropping off after eight, uh, week, week six or week seven. Um, that's okay, you know? Then I, that I'm happier to lose students then, than now. Because if someone, if I lose someone now, I don't even know if they, if I lost them after they learned the value of C++ or even before. Right? If they came and on the first couple of lectures, in the first couple of lectures, they had a bad time and saw all these other students, obviously experienced professionals, some of them, right? Uh, and I say, I felt intimidated and they went away. They went away with a bad taste in their mouth, right? So I have no idea. I, I, I never even got to know them, right? If you're going to drop, just drop very quickly, right? Uh, or drop after week six or week seven, when you've gotten enough of a taste and you know, right? That's why when, when someone drops after week six, I'm more confident they'll come back because they've actually had a chance to taste it, right? They came into the ice cream parlor, had a couple of tastes and then went out and say, I'll come back later, right? Not just walk in and walk out immediately. Then you know that person is never coming back. So uh, so stick, stick around and this is the time to work, right? Okay? So just work, just give it, give, give it your 100%, okay? And, and, and be wrong, be wrong lots and lots of times. It wasn't, this was a, I think this was a motto in Facebook before they started losing a lot of money because of that, <laughs> maybe. So uh, I think it was, uh, be wrong, break things, or something like that. During the early days of Facebook, in, in their labs, uh, there was a motto, my motto floating around. Move, move fast, break things. Move, move fast, break things. I, I think that was it. Move fast and break things. And I think at some point it became uh, unofficial. <laughs> um, because you gotta be wrong. You gotta be wrong and correct yourself really quickly. That is a, that is, that is a way to get to success as quickly as possible, right? Don't be afraid to be wrong, right? People who are afraid to be wrong will move slowly, right? People who are okay to be wrong. Obviously you can't be wrong, you know, jumping off a cliff, right? So you shouldn't do dangerously wrong things, but you should do, you know, safely wrong things, absolutely. All right, thank, thank you so much for hanging around and you guys are all here. Sammy, Sam, Sam, thank you so much, okay, for driving today and-, and, and, and Yeah, for sure. And, 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 and these colors, and this actually looks very nice too, and I can read it. Thank you for your notes. Uh, hopefully you'll take your take the screen on a laptop next time. Yeah, and 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 code also, right? But we'll yeah. come back to you, right? Hopefully you won't be uh, you won't be uh, coding in the next couple of weeks unless nobody else volunteers. Okay, I want everybody to get a chance to uh, code. Okay, so and you can talk amongst yourself in the forums or even in chat and say, uh, can I go next week? Okay, and then that person can take the screen. Multiple yeah, don't make me code. My interface looks disgusting because I need it to be high contrast. Don't make me code. You're not going to like it. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. No, but this this was fantastic. Okay, um, uh, I think this uh, was I think very useful, very useful. I think it was useful. Okay, I don't know about others. Uh, yeah, hands up if you think it was useful. Right. So th thank you, Sam. Okay. So everybody who's got their hand up is basically thanking you. Um, so th thank you for driving today and, and making it very nice. And, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, if anyone wants to take a screenshot, uh, you better do it in the next few seconds because I'm going to stop sharing in a little bit. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll, I'll just stop sharing now. All of, all of this will be on YouTube. And, and keep, keep everything I said in mind, guys, okay? Think about things that you can produce, right? Because it's gotten cheap. You don't have to go to Hollywood anymore. You can just do it in, at Foothill. We have <laughs> state-of-the-art equipment. We really do. Audiovisual too. Even audiovisual. You talk to someone in, in our media department, they'll just set you up with a green room. And, and top of the line uh, audio audio video equipment, right? So you can conduct a talk show in our uh, Foothill studio, right? Even though you're not enrolled in ORPS, right? They'll, they'll be happy to set you up with it. And, and, and I, I'll talk to someone if, if need be, right? So, um, so there are so many opportunities now. You don't have to be there, right? Uh, and and so, so that's what I mean, right? If you're interested in <clears throat> something like that, not directly mainline computer science, it's more in you know art and entertainment. You're in, interested in uh, art and entertainment, but you still want to do computer science. This is a great opportunity to combine the two, right? So you can actually produce 
a, uh, an art, uh, you know, a, a talk show uh, with interesting things drawn from computer science. I think this is what happened, right? So in fact, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a guy called uh, Veritasium. No, not a guy. There is a, a Facebook channel called Veritasium, right? It's spelled like the element potassium, right? Ver Veritasium. Uh, and I happened to see a video of him once. And he's one of those guys. So he's one of those guys. Uh, like, you know, I said, uh, the people who started off with YouTube videos uh, that didn't go anywhere. And then he started looking at different places. And he said, you know, these people gave him good advice as to how to make the YouTube video successful. Now he has like millions of subscribers, right? And then he was good enough to make a video about, uh, about his, you know, failures before and successes now and what got him there. So that's, that's, those are really interesting videos, isn't it? So anyway, the reason I started talking about that was that I saw that video and in that he said, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I, I uh, studied physics. Uh, this is my recollection, right? I, I must've seen that video like many months ago. Uh, so he said, uh, I, I, um, he, he got into college uh, to major in physics, um, but then uh, his passion was in um, video production. Uh, and to, to, to make movies. I think he says this is to make movies, right? And so he tried his hand at making movies, lots and lots of movies, right? And some of them got like uh, 10 views, 20 views, and, 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 and none of them really went, went viral. Um, um, but then uh, he also was interested in physics. I, must, I remember, I don't remember that part of the video. Uh, so, and so he wanted to see if we can com combine the two together. And so he started producing physics videos, right? Videos about physics concepts. And that really took off big time. Well, you know, didn't take off by itself. He still had to apply all those uh, things that he learned from other YouTubers. Um, but it took off big way. Now he's, you know, he's got many subscribers, uh, and he's, people just fly him all over the world just to make a, I think, right, to make a short video uh, talking about an interesting result they've got, right? Uh, so someone in maybe you know, um, uh, someone at uh, Los Alamos lab, right, came up with an incredible result about a black hole, right, observation data. Uh, and, and they publish it, obviously. But they can also, you know, say, I'm going to fly you over here so you can make a video and, and explain why this is wrong and then explain what I found, right? And, and he'd be happy to do that. And, and, and he comes over and he does that video. Um, so <clears> like, <throat> that, like that. So you guys can be, right? So you don't have to. And he was just a student like you. And not, and not at Foodle, obviously, but uh, so many colleges, right? So, um, so you can just be a student these days, nothing to stop you from making a mark, right? It's not like those days when, you know, so many different factors uh, were uh, getting in the way of whether you can succeed. Now, these days, if you actually have true words, just put it out there, right? Uh, and many people will just give you, right? Not everybody is prejudiced and not every, everybody is going to look at who did this and then say, well, is this poem good? Uh, was it written by Emily Dickinson? Then I'm going to upload it, right? Uh, so there are people like that. And many of those people don't know, right? If, if you don't know uh, enough about a particular field, then you're going to defer to, the, uh, uh, to what you think are experts, right? So if you are not a good poet yourself or you're not a good computer mathematician yourself, right? When you see something interesting, you're going to say, no, that's wrong because this famous guy says it's wrong, right? Or, you know, it's not published by the famous guy, so I'm not going to read it because I'm not, I don't have the ability to tell if that math proof is correct or not. Right, so uh, so all, all of those uh, factors come into play, but these days you can just put it out there, and uh, there are so many people with good sense that will look at what you've done, and and one of them is bound to say, well, that was truly valuable, right? It's truly valuable. So everything. So I, what I'm saying is there are no excuses these days, right? I don't. I shouldn't say excuses. There are no reasons to stop, all right? So you don't you don't have any blockers. Uh, you don't have anything that stands in your way between you and success. You don't even need money these days, right? All you need is time. Uh, and even food is free many places, right? So you go to a library, sit in front of a laptop, and with a notebook, you know, you can just create half a world right there. Bam, like that. And so everything is now democratized and free. And I think that will go a long way towards your success, right? And uh, this current generation anyway. Uh, so you don't have to work as hard as we did to achieve the same state. Um, you can come there easier and then you can shoot for the next level and whatever you want to do after that, right? Or do nothing at all, and which would be your ultimate luxury, right? So you can shoot for all of that. 
I hope to see all of that, okay? I hope to see all of that because, you know, I'm pretty sure, even though we try and keep these things interesting, uh, I'm pretty sure at some point, it will, even this will get boring, right? Even this will get boring. And then we have to start creating new content, new interesting ways of do, doing things that will keep it lively and, you know, students interested as, as time goes on. Is, is, is that okay with you guys? So next week, yeah. this is what we're going to do, right? Next week, I hope that we'll have, one person will have to volunteer to take the screen, right? But then everybody has to code in that window because once you take the screen, that URL will be shared with everybody and everybody will jump into the same screen and each one will get one, you know, two inches in that program, right? They put a comment and then one expression, right? And then maybe 10 minutes before the class ends, we can run it and look at the results, all of us, right? Nobody's allowed to run it before then. Sound like a good plan? Have you have yeah. a good professor. Yeah. yeah. If you have a better plan, come up with that plan and bring it to class, okay? And we'll do that too. Thank you all so much, all right? For your time and your patience and sticking around. And I hope to see most of you again on Tuesday, okay? Tuesday. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.